Our story began with the biography of the great men of the Lenoise mainland, page 877. There was someone who was bestowed by the public with many numerous epithets and rewarded with the highest love and respect. He was the star of the empire, a spiritual magician unknown until that day, an unsurpassed strategist, the greatest pledge of all that exists. She was the youngest daughter of the Artin family, Evilia Artina. Not only the rulers of the empire, but even the highest demons and spirits bowed their heads before her. All the roads she traveled were covered with flowers. The traces she left behind were her achievements. But on the other hand, she wanted the simplest things. She just wanted to love and find her own little happiness. It was said that she had a very strong connection with a person who had been by her side for a long time. In a sense, one could say that she had achieved what she wanted more than anything else in the world. The events moved to the lake. There, an unknown girl was completely unconscious in the lake. It seemed to her that she had died. She couldn't understand how it happened, because until recently, she had been busy with her business and felt extremely exhausted from her work. Walking home from work in the evening, passing by the lake, she saw the silhouette of a person who seemed to be drowning in the water. This immediately alarmed and frightened her. At that moment, she quickly rushed to help the unknown person, but when she tried to catch the person by the body, she realized that she was unable to touch it at all. The heroine was very surprised by what was happening at that moment. Her eyes were like two big diamonds from the unknown. The girl lost her parents very early in life. After their death, her relatives took her in. She could not call it life, but rather survival. Therefore, her life was not sweet at all. When she was very young, she was very disappointed with her life. She was often beaten, and running away from creditors became a normal life for her. Studying was the only hope for the protagonist to save herself and achieve something in her future. Even if her life looked more like a scorched desert than a fairy tale flowering alley, she still hoped to be able to walk along it. But being in the water, she realized that she was lucky in that life, and at that moment, she only wanted peace. Opening her eyes, the heroine did not realize where she was, the whole space seemed to be pink and blue. She looked around with her big eyes and did not understand anything at all. The girl tried to remember what had happened and where she could have ended up. At some point, she thought it was the afterlife. When she opened her eyes, she saw an unknown person in front of her. At that moment, she thought that she was in heaven. But afterwards, she realized that it was probably hell. She assumed that this was due to the fact that she had died without paying her debts she folded her arms and realized that it was definitely not hell. An unidentified person said at that moment that it was definitely not hell. It was a young man with long blue eyes. His slender posture fascinated the girl. She knelt down and quickly bowed her head because she immediately thought it was God. With her mouth wide open, the girl thought that this was not an ordinary person. She had absolutely no idea where she was. The boy looked at the girl and said that she was an unusual person. After all, his energy had no effect on her. The heroine was surprised to say that she had been told all her life that she was quite intelligent. But the unknown guy had a completely different opinion and said that she was definitely not smart. He went on to say that he had never met a person who would throw themselves into the water in an attempt to save a spirit and end up drowning themselves. The girl could not understand what he was talking about. But one thing she realized for sure was that the young man was a spirit of water. Later, he told her about it himself. He said that the spirit had accidentally slipped into the passage between the worlds that he had opened and got into the human dimension. On her own free will, a girl passing by this passage noticed his baby. Out of her ignorance and uncertainty, she decided to throw herself into the water to save him. At that moment, the heroine realized that she had died trying to save the water spirit. Although this looked like a completely unfair and worthless death, it was true. She realized that there was nothing in that world that she loved or regretted. Then she asked if she had managed to save the spirit in the water. She asked the boy about it. He replied that fortunately she had succeeded. He then added that they, the spirits, could not live where no one believed in them. If they were to come to the human dimension, they would immediately be killed. This was because there was no one in the human world who believed in spirits. One girl tried to save his child, threw herself into the water without hesitation and gained faith. Thanks to this, the little girl was able to avoid a terrible fate. The man bowed his head and thanked the girl for that. 
but he was really sorry that in the process of helping her, she had lost her own life. The girl was completely upset by this. She said that she had nothing to lose anyway. At some point she was even happy that it had happened. But the boyfriend said that she could not just take her own life. He then added that they were the kind of people who always gave as much as they received. And since the girl had lost her life trying to save his baby, it meant that her life should be the price she paid. They were indebted to the girl and therefore wanted to give her a new life. The girl was shocked by what she heard and realized that she had the opportunity to be reborn. But then the boy added that in return, she would have to forget everything about her previous life. Bowing her head and putting her hands on her knees, the girl replied that she was very grateful for his care. She said that in her whole life she had never asked God for anything, but there was something for which she was ready to ask him on her knees. Putting her hand on her chest, she asked with tears in her eyes if the spirit could make her surrounded by the love of her family. This was what she lacked most in her life. She then added a comma, saying that if this was not possible, she would prefer not to be born at all. The spirit came closer and put its hand on her head. The girl could not understand what was happening at all. Afterwards, he said that he thought I would not have needed to ask for this. After all, he believed that the girl was one of those who deserved love. Tears came to her eyes again. She had never felt such kindness before. The events moved to the great castle. That day, it was already night outside. The stars were shining brightly in the sky. Hugo von Arten was standing at the door, the Duke. He folded his hands in front of him and looked at one point with a thoughtful gaze. He was a tall and courageous man with blonde hair. At that moment, his son Cedric von Arten approached him. He was the second son of the Arten family. The young man was also very excited. He came closer and addressed his father. Putting his hands behind his back, he told his father to rest a little. The boy tried to calm the man down and told him that everything would be fine with his mom. At that moment, the man said that his son should not reassure him because he was fine. The boy immediately apologized and said that he was not at all comfortable. Cedric stood behind Hugo and silently looked at his back. At that moment, he signified that his father could also be understood. After all, seven hours had passed since his mother had entered the delivery room. Alone, they still hadn't heard the baby cry. The Duke leaned against the door with Nadia waiting for an answer. They hoped that she and the baby would be okay. Suddenly, the door opened and a scream was heard. His scream was like thunder from heaven. There was a woman lying on the bed with a small baby in her arms. When she saw Hugo, she was very happy. It was his wife, Alicia Artina. At that moment, she looked very exhausted, but also very happy. Hugo immediately rushed to his wife and kissed her on the forehead. Alicia said, however, that everything had happened just as Hugo wanted it to. His greatest dream was for them to have a daughter. The woman handed the child to the father. He immediately took the child in his arms and could not get enough of her. He looked at the girl with a tender gaze and said that she was his daughter. At that moment, the Duke said that if she ever went through hard times, they would definitely be there for her. This warm first meeting made everyone cry, even the servants. He went on to say that if the girl ever had difficulties on her way, he would shower her with flowers, even if he had to cut all the flowers in the world. His son Cedric heard this moment, these words. The boy looked at his newborn sister with a surprised look. They all stood near their mother, and the Duke turned to the newborn and thanked her for choosing them. Meanwhile, the water spirit said goodbye to the girl. At that moment, he said that they would see each other again someday. The newborn baby was a child gifted with their love. It was into the body of this girl that the rescuer got the baby. Time passed, and the child grew. She was lying in her crib, and it seemed to her that it was very boring. She could no longer play with the rattles and hanging toys, and so she cried a lot. At that moment, the services came to the bedside. They could not understand why the little lady was making such strange noises, the girls discussed it and suggested that she might be in pain. At that moment, the child was lying in bed and just screaming. One of the servants assumed that the child was asleep. The other girl agreed with her partner because it was already lunchtime. Hearing this, the baby started crying even worse because they were forcing him to go to bed. She thought about how all she had done all day was eat, sleep, and go potty. Then she remembered that everything had happened just as the man, the water spirit, had said. 
The memories of her past life were being forgotten more and more every day. The words that the body and mind are inseparable were not unfounded. A little longer, and he would have to completely forget his past and become an ordinary child. Every day was no different from the previous one, but the girl was sure that it was only for the better. At that moment, Cedric entered the room. He addressed one of the servants and called her by the name of Vivienne. He asked if his sister was already asleep. After all, she believed that her brother often visited her room. The maid replied that the little lady had just had a little snack and was about to go back to sleep. Afterwards, Cedric asked the maids to keep it a secret from his parents that he had been there. He explained that he was supposed to be at a fencing class at that moment, not walking around the rooms. The boy came closer to the crib and smilingly said that he just really wanted to look at Ava. The girl smiled and went up to him. She realized that he had decided to skip class for her. She laughed sincerely and decided that for once she had to appear to him as a nice child. This simply melted the boy's heart. He asked Vivian if he thought their Eve had smiled at him at that moment. After that, the boy said that there was no doubt that there was no one in the world who was cuter than their little Eva. He leaned over to his sister and asked her to smile at him again. From the servants who took care of the girl, she learned a little about Artin's family. One of the maids showed the toy and turned to her partner, Margaret. She said that the owner and his sons wore bracelets made of thread. They discussed that the owner had not sparred with knights for nine months because he was afraid that he might break the bracelet. There was a superstition among the people that if you wear a bracelet made of very thin thread before giving birth and make sure that it does not break, you will definitely have a beautiful daughter. The father was looking forward to the birth of his daughter. So perhaps it was not a superstition at all. But at that moment, the girl was alarmed by the fact that the maids were talking about sons, and she knew only Cedric. The eldest son, Arkan, had gone north to succeed him. The servants admired the fact that the lady had such a stylish older brother. The two young gentlemen had already become the envy of many young ladies in the capital. Even at such a young age, they paid so much attention to discipline and their duties. Wherever you looked, there was just the perfect candidate for the role of the next duke. The little lady was shocked by what she heard. The girl was thinking about how she had barely been born into a cozy and peaceful family. And then, such news. She had already made a mental note of what the return of the duke's eldest son would be like. She was sure that when he arrived, he would tell her that since she was part of the duke's family, she had to sacrifice her life to fulfill her duty. Her imagination of her brother was terrifying. She thought that her older brother would not let her go anywhere until she had read all the books. After her imagination, she realized that she was in bad shape. Of course, the girl did not expect a road lined with flowers, but she wanted to give up the life that would be full of unnecessary responsibilities at that moment and almost burst into tears again. That same day, a carriage with a large guard drove up to the house. Arkan von Artina arrived at the castle. He was the first son of the Artin family. Approaching his parents, he greeted them and bowed his head low. His mother immediately hugged her son and said that it was a great blessing that he had returned safe and sound. The woman was very happy to see him. The boy raised his head and asked if anything unusual had happened during the time he had been away. At that moment, the father said that something did happen. Arkan immediately thought that someone had attacked them again. But at that moment, Hugo clenched his hand into a fist and said that their Eva was very beautiful. After that, the father added that the girl looked very much like her mother, and when she laughed, she was just adorable. He then said that Eva had recently called him dad, but until then, she could not say the word mom at all. The woman added that their baby girl was not yet able to speak at all. They told their son this with a smile on their face. At that moment, Arkin did not understand at all what had happened there during the eight months he had been away. The father told him that Eva was already waiting for her older brother and ordered him to go to her immediately. Arkan said that he had to report to his father first, but at that moment, Hugo said that his brother had not seen his sister at all. Arkan replied that he had no right to put personal matters before the highest state official. At that moment, Cedric ran up to his brother. He was holding his little sister Eva in his arms. The boy immediately ran to the harness. He held little Ava in his brother's arms and told him that their little sister was very sweet. The little girl immediately decided to use her death stroke, and at that moment she stretched out her hand and smiled at the boy. 
Cedric motioned to the Arcanist to come closer to Ava. But then the boy remembered that his brother had to report to his father, so he decided to wait for his brother and play with Eva in the meantime. Hearing this, Arcan replied that his report to his father was not that important at all. The events moved inside the castle. The whole family sat down at the evening table. Hugo went to his wife and said that he thought their little one was nothing like the one he saw yesterday. The woman leaned into the child's face and said that she was even more adorable that day. Suddenly, he asked his wife to give him his daughter in her arms. Cedric and Arkan looked at their parents in astonishment. At that moment, Cedric said that his father was very busy with governmental affairs and suggested that he should take her in his arms instead. Suddenly, Arkan interrupted his brother's conversation and said that he was not even seven years old yet and did not need to overload himself. Then the boy suggested that he should take the girl in his arms. At that moment, the parents looked at the boy in surprise. Then the mother offered the girl a fruit, but Ava refused to eat it. She grabbed it in her hands and offered it to some of the insects that were there. Chaos broke out among everyone, because no one could understand to whom the girl had offered the fruit. Ava was lying in her mother's arms and smiling. She hoped that her life would continue to be so peaceful. Time passed very quickly. One day, Hugo came up to the girl and said that they were going to the Imperial Palace. At that moment, he picked her up in his arms. But Ava did not like this idea at all and did not want to go anywhere. The events moved to the Emperor. It was Carlisle Regulus Arcadia. He was looking at the paper with a thoughtful look and thinking about something. At that moment, a servant entered his room and reported that the Duke of Artina had arrived. The Emperor ordered him to enter. Hugu entered the Emperor's room and greeted His Majesty with the son of Arcadia. On that day, there was a feeling of a coma, as if all the light of the world was concentrated on that day. The Emperor said that there was no one else there but the two of them, so he invited him to talk without formality. At that moment, the man got up from his chair and invited the guest to sit down. Pointing to a basket of fruit, he treated Hugo to some citrons he had brought from the kingdom. Citrine. It was a fruit with the flavor of mixing orange and lime. He thought about his husband and decided to bring them. At that moment, Hugo said that he had a request to the emperor. This surprised the man very much, and he did not know to whom a man who had practically no problems could ask for anything. Putting his hands on his knees, Hugo asked that the Emperor lend him the banquet hall of the Imperial Palace. Carlyle was shocked to hear this. He asked the man why he needed the Imperial Hall. Hugo replied that he had heard everything well and asked to use His Majesty's banquet hall. Carlyle said that the Duke was aware that for centuries it had been used only for events related to the founding of their empire or the Emperor's birthday. Of course, Every sane aristocrat knew perfectly well on whose family's blood the well-being of their empire rested. Therefore, he thought that no one would object if the man was given this right. However, the emperor was very amused by the fact that such a straightforward person as the duke decided to break all traditions and ask for more preferences. Only love between a spirit and a demon was bolder. At that moment, the emperor laughed out loud and the Duke drank his tea in silence. The Emperor put his hands on the table and asked if Arkin was engaged to someone. The Duke replied that he did not need to ask for a banquet hall for Arkin's engagement because they could have done it at his own estate. Then the Duke said that in a month, their daughter Eva's birthday was to take place. This surprised the Emperor because the Duke wanted to use his banquet hall not even for his own wedding or engagement, but for a ball in honor of his daughter's birthday. He pointed his finger at Hugo and said that he had lost his mind. The Duke then added that he would also need a banquet hall when she would be going out for the first time. So the man decided to make arrangements in advance. The Emperor did not know what to say to Hugo. But at that moment, Hugo picked up the fruit basket and said that he was taking it with him. He thought that Eva would definitely like them. The Emperor looked silently after the Duke and could not understand what had happened there. Meanwhile, it was night outside and Ava was sleeping peacefully in her bed. Suddenly, she felt as if someone had touched her. She felt very warm and cozy. It was the spirit of water. He smiled at the girl and said that she looked happy. The boy gently stroked the girl's head while she was sleeping. He told her to call him and he would be waiting for her. Ava opened her eyes and saw the silhouette in front of her, but at that moment she was very sleepy, so she fell asleep again. In the morning, her brother came to the girl's bedside. 
When Ava woke up, she thought she had a dream, as if Arkin had come to her. She realized that that day was special, and she had to wake up. The boy took her in his arms, hugged her gently, and wished his sister a happy birthday. The boy was very happy to be the first to congratulate Ava. He woke up early and ran to her especially for this purpose. He gently hugged her and kissed her. In a moment, the girl realized that it was her birthday. She was dressed in the most beautiful dress. Her Majesty had specially ordered that dress for her daughter. Ava went to the mirror and was fascinated by her appearance. She thought that it was the hygiene that made her look so beautiful. At that moment, the woman realized that the girl liked her very much. Meanwhile, Cedric was thinking that he needed to put more effort into fencing, as he felt that in the future, he would have many duels with all kinds of hooligans. The father, mother, and brother entered the room. They were fascinated by the beauty of the birthday girl. The mother said that that day their little girl was simply magical. Cedric ran up to the girl and caught her hands and said that Eva was very sweet. The mother stood on the side and was happy to see such a friendly relationship between the brother and sister. The father approached the birthday girl and leaned over and put his hand to her face, looking into her eyes and wishing her a happy birthday. After that, Hugo asked if he was the first to congratulate her. Then he said that he had prepared the best gift for the girl and asked her to walk. Raising her hands, she said that they should go to the Imperial Palace. But the birthday girl did not like this idea at all and did not want to go anywhere. The girl believed that it was her birthday and they did not need to go to the Imperial Palace that day. Eva just wanted a quiet and peaceful life. The girl hoped that someone would be able to calm down the family. At that moment, her mother said that Hugo had ordered a new carriage for the occasion. The Duke replied that he had to use all kinds of magic to prevent the shaking and scare away insects. The events moved to the Imperial Palace. It was there that the banquet on the occasion of little Ava's birthday was about to begin. The guests discussed the little girl and said that she was very charming and took after her mother. Everyone noticed that Eva had very beautiful golden hair, like the rays of the sun. It was the color she took after her father. Not everyone supported the idea of celebrating the little girl's birthday in His Majesty's Banquet Hall. The guests believed that even though she was the daughter of a duke, she should not celebrate in the Imperial Palace. Looking at the place where the young lady was supposed to sit, everyone indignantly said that it was prepared as if for His Majesty the Emperor himself. Everyone thought that even for the Artin family it was too much. At that moment, one of the knights asked to greet the Duke and Duchess and their sons, as well as the little young lady Artin. Hugo and his wife came in, as did Cedric and his harness. One of the brothers was holding little Eva in his arms. Everyone looked at the family in fascination. Suddenly, one of the guards exclaimed that His Majesty the Emperor had arrived. The man immediately said that he was just passing by to wish the daughter of his only friend a happy birthday. The man went up to the Duke and asked him, since he was the organizer, to say something. Hugo first decided to thank the son of their empire, Zato, for lighting up their celebration with his presence. After that, he wanted to sincerely express his gratitude to all those who came that day to wish their Eva a happy birthday. He added that his daughter would light the way for the Artin family. And then, the Duke added that he hoped that no one there would ever stand in the way of the Artin family. Afterward, one of the guests approached the man and said that it was an honor to be present at their celebration. He added that while he was traveling around the Harwent Empire, he managed to find the beautiful bracelet. The man added that the bracelet was unlike anything the Duke had ever seen before. He was also told that the tiara contained magical powers. The Duke listened attentively to what the man was telling him. The guests addressed his grace and said that the birthday girl was truly beautiful. They were amazed at how much the girl resembled the Duke's wife. Hugo thanked them and asked if he was not mistaken, and the man was Count Cerny. Everyone admired little Eva and talked about how if they changed her hair color to turquoise, she would look like a duchess. Her blue eyes alone showed that she was the daughter of a duchess. At that moment, Eva was sitting in a chair and had absolutely no idea what was happening around her. At that moment, an unknown man approached the Duke. He said that they had not seen his lordship for a long time. The stranger congratulated the man on his daughter's birthday. It was Lucius de Font Marquis. Then Eva looked at the man and did not like him at all. The Marquis smiled at the girl and said that her eyes were just magical. Bowing his head to the Duke, the man said that he should have stopped by the estate earlier and congratulated them personally. 
But Hugo, who was standing behind his daughter, said that everything was fine and the man had not wasted his time. After that, the Duke added that they did not receive guests. At that moment, the man said that there was a rumor in town that the Marquis of Cassis had visited the Duke. But with a suspicious smile, he said that this meant that the capital's gossip was not to be trusted after all. The Duke added that he meant that they would not receive uninvited guests. Meanwhile, Ava's brother came up to her and took her in his arms and suggested that they take a short walk. Together, the three of them went up to the room. There, they decided to have a little snack. Then, Cedric asked his brother why his father was behaving like that. Arkan said that Her Majesty the Empress had died a year ago. The then Crown Prince was the next pretender to the Imperial throne. But mosquitoes ago, after Empress Lawana died of an illness, all power in the palace passed into the hands of the Emperor's concubine, Banake. And in the highest circles, there were many who wanted to put Prince Edwin on the throne, bypassing the direct heir. Unfortunately, the situation was very serious. The crown prince still retained the right to the throne, and it was even clear that he was the natural-born emperor. However, the fact that he had no proper maternal relatives could have been fatal for him. The Marquis of Dauphin used the situation to get closer to the crown prince. And if the crown prince ascended the throne, the Marquis could easily become a favorite. It was possible that even he could take the place of the Duke. That is why he and his father had such a tense relationship. As Ava was listening attentively to her brother's story, she realized that something strange had happened. The girl thought about how her eyesight could have gone bad at such a young age. She saw a man with the mark of a lord in front of her. This was the only creature that had received his blessing. Malyutka turned to the girl and said that Eva was the first person who understood them, even though they hadn't made a contract for anything. Malyutka went on to say that the girl's energy was as pure as the bishop's. It was a very fresh feeling. She was very pleased to be near Eva. The girl did not understand at all about which Vladika Malyutka was talking to her. Then she told her that they all appeared thanks to him. They were called to protect him. He was the lord who owned all the waters of that world. The little girl told Eve to make a covenant with them. The girl did not understand what the unknown creature meant. Then she went on to say that they were all waiting until her body was mature enough to fulfill the terms of the agreement. From that day on, they would promise to protect her. Eve watched and did not understand how such small fish could protect her. It seemed to her that it was she who had to protect them, so that someone would not accidentally hurt them with a fishing rod. Then, Ava shouted out that she would protect them and they would be her friends now. The little girl was embarrassed at how she was supposed to be friends with the spirits. The gossip said that Eva was a difficult person. Then she ordered the girl to repeat everything after her. At that moment, the heroine said that she didn't know how to speak yet, but Malyutka replied that it was enough for her to just think. Heaven and earth, fire and water, on the side of the scale where the worlds of the Foundation are located, she was lonely. Daring to ask her to be her companion, she offered her soul in exchange. Water is the foundation of the foundations. She said that she should simply be her companion. The very foundation of water is completely her spirit, and then she vowed to be her sword and shield on her path. Meanwhile, the banquet continued. Eve was thinking that there would be a lot of noise if anyone found out about her pact with the spirits. She thought the best thing to do was to keep it a secret. Suddenly, it became very quiet. No one in the room moved. Ava did not understand what had come over them all. Spiritual mages had a seal on their foreheads that only the spirits themselves could recognize. Especially during the first transaction, in which a person's connection with the spirits was sealed on his or her soul. At about the tenth minute, the mark on the forehead would light up with a blinding explosion of light. This was the only moment of coma when people could see the seal. It was enough to understand the nature of the spirits. It was the Heron's edition, page 605. Everyone looked at little Eve and could not believe what they were seeing. Eve did not understand why everyone was looking at her and what was happening. She thought she had done something wrong. One of the brothers shouted that they shouldn't look at his sister because they had no right to look at her so disrespectfully. At that moment, the boys realized that there was a seal of the spirits on her forehead. The guests started shouting that this was impossible because she was only one year old, but everything was written on her forehead. There was no doubt that the Duke's daughter had the seal of water. At that moment, the Emperor asked for silence in the banquet hall. 
He said that it was impossible to be certain that the pattern on the Duke's daughter's forehead was a spirit seal. He believed that it was not within her power to create an agreement with the spirits, because she was only one year old. He asked if the Arten family had ever experienced any event more significant than this. The Emperor shouted that there was no doubt that the spirits had blessed their glorious empire. He went over to Cedric and said that he wanted to take their little princess for a few minutes. At that moment, the Emperor was approached by Hugo and told that he needed to calm down a bit. This angered the man and he told the coma that he was very calm at that moment, but it was not true at all. After that, the Emperor said that there were rumors all over the world that their empire was left to the patronage of spirits. Everyone around them said, however, that their glory was a thing of the past. Suddenly, Ava asked for a moment of attention and said that the Emperor was considered her father's master. The man listened attentively to what the girl had to say. After that, she continued to say that if this was true, it was considered the bread of their family. And asking, as strange as it may sound, was the most important thing in that world. Smiling, she grabbed him by the chest and said that she would not let go of her bread so easily. At that moment, the Emperor picked up the girl and smilingly said that their princess recognized her father's friend. The man was very happy about this. He bent down to the girl and thanked her for everything. After that, the Emperor hugged the little birthday girl and expressed his hope that she would take care of their crown prince in the future. Ava did not understand why the Emperor asked her to do this. Holding the girl in his arms, the Emperor addressed all the guests and asked if they had heard that after so many years of waiting, a spiritual magician had finally been born in their country. He said that it was necessary to inform all the inhabitants of the Empire about this. Then the Emperor added that a three-day festival should be organized in the capital that day in honor of the birth of the new spiritual magician. The festival went on. Eve's mother was watching it from the window. At that moment, Hugo approached her. He said that the scars of the first war with demons had not yet healed. Even a child knew that the exact opposite of a demon was a spirit. He reflected on the fact that the very existence of a spiritual wizard was somehow directly related to the security of the country. They considered it a very famous event. Hugo's wife looked at him and asked him if the Marquis of Dauphin had done something wrong again. Hugo replied that the Marquis had not caused him any problems at all. Moreover, the man added that he certainly shouldn't wear a head. Then Alicia asked what would happen next. At that moment, Komak was embarrassed and said that he was very worried about whether he would be able to protect their Ava. Alicia was also thinking about this. Such experiences did not give her peace of mind. Their Eva's abilities had manifested themselves right in front of all the nobility in the banquet hall. The parents were worried that many would now try to get closer to her. Their daughter was not only charming, but also had outstanding abilities. Her father used to say that she could tear the eyes out of all those masks in the capital. Alicia did not understand what he meant at all. Hugo said that it was necessary to attach knights to the girl as guards. They wanted to prevent the boy from doing anything to their daughter without a brain. Alicia did not understand why this was necessary, because she believed that no one in their right mind would dare to threaten the safety of their girl. But after thinking about it for a few minutes, she agreed to introduce the knights to her. The woman thought it was a very good idea. After discussing everything, they decided that they needed to call those guys to the capital. It was necessary to protect their daughter. Eliza already thought she could hear them barking. Meanwhile, gossip about the selection of knights to protect their lady was already spreading through the city. One of Arton's knights even heard about it to the Herald. Another knight, Twain, replied that he had refused to do so. They discussed that there would be no fun for them if there were no demons, no bad guys from the kingdom. The Herald also said that he refused. He thought it was very boring in that capital. One of Arton's knights, Alec, said that he had heard that the young lady was very much like her mother. At this point, one of them suggested that they buy a gift for their lady. One of the knights thought about what kind of person the little lady was. It was no secret that even among the knights who were in the service of the emperor himself, they were unrivaled. Instead of sitting quietly in the capital and enjoying all the benefits and riches, they personally went to fight demons in the northern regions. However, this is not what they became famous for. It had been two years since the comatose Duke of Artan had driven them farther north. 
their mere presence could have caused a lot of trouble for the people around them. The Knights of Arton's favorite pastime was to destroy everything that remained of the Old Kingdom. Their main passion, however, was hunting for the highest demons. There were no other such scoundrels in the North. One of the aides came up to the knights and said that the Duke was thanking them all for their loyal service. One of the knights smiled and greeted Hadel. He told the boy that he thought he looked refreshed in the years since he had seen him. The knights laughed at the boy and discussed the possibility that he might have a girlfriend, but Cadell denied it. The boy stood with his hands behind his back and endured the laughter. Afterwards, one of the knights told everyone to look at the boy's sad eyes. They were 100% sure that the girl had dumped him. The boy took a deep breath and thought about having the strength to endure it all. It had been about 10 years since he had been turned from an ordinary servant into a butler for the Arton family. The boy did not want everything to go down the drain because of the knights. At that moment, smiling, one of the knights asked what they would have for dinner that day. They continued to make fun of the boy and said that they would not refuse a barbecue. Their behavior did not please the butler at all. The boy wondered why the owner had invited those uncultured dogs. At that moment, a little girl approached the knights. She was holding a basket of fruit. Surprised, she turned to the boys and asked who they were. The butler turned to the girl and told her to meet the Knights of Arton. They had sworn an oath of loyalty to Ava's father and now served under his command. One of the knights introduced himself as Twain and said that he would be her personal bodyguard. Little Eva, standing with a basket in her hands, did not understand what they were talking about. Because of her age, she mispronounced the words. At that moment, the herald interrupted his friend and said that he would be her personal bodyguard. Then he added that he was just a master at reading fairy tales. The little girl smiled and realized that it was very noisy, but it made her very happy. She took a raspberry from the basket and handed it to one of the knights. Then she said hello to him. Looking at the little princess, the knights said that they would not go north anymore. They no longer needed the demons or the soldiers of the kingdom. At that moment, Hugo approached the knights. He said that the boys had done a great job that day. Bowing their heads, they greeted his lordship. At that moment, the girl put her hand on her chest and began to repeat everything the knights had said about their arrival. The knights turned their heads and asked the little lady what she was talking about at that moment. But one of them made a remark to the others and told them that the duke was standing in front of them but the boys wanted to hear again what the girl had said. Meanwhile, Hugo was looking at little Ava and was fascinated by her cuteness. Ava ran up to her father and hugged him. With a smile on her face, she told him that the knights would report to him about their arrival. Even the butler smiled and realized that they had a fun future ahead of them. After all, only one person was needed for the role of permanent bodyguard. A month passed. The knights were training hard. During the training, little Eva came up to them. One of the boys sat down and asked the girl what she was doing at the training ground. The girl opened her comma bag that she was carrying on her shoulder and said that it was for adventures. When the knights saw all the things that fell out of the bag, they thought that their lady was having a picnic and not looking for adventure. The boys thought she was a real adventurer because she had brought only the most necessary things. The knights smiled and said that the girl had done everything right and that it was better to leave such unnecessary things as veal, sleeping bags, and knives to them. At that moment, Ava's brother came up to them and said that she could not go on the journey alone. He offered to accompany her and they set off together. Ava was very happy about this and suggested that they all go on the journey together. At that moment, one of the knights said that they were ready to go with her even to catch the demon king. And then one of the boys asked if the girl would like to hear about their adventures. Eva liked the idea very much and was eager to hear all the stories. At that moment, Hugo came up to them. He turned to the knights and told them to keep it in moderation. The man warned them that they had to go back to the training ground. Then, one of the knights' boys said that the duke was wrong and he did not see the letter almost fall on the lady. Eva stood in the middle of all the knights and did not understand what they meant. Hugo looked at his little daughter and wondered which of all the worthy knights should become her guardian. All the knights stood around the girl. At that moment, she smiled and shouted out, but she already knew who would be her guardian. Approaching one of them, Eva said that she chose him. The guy bowed his head and rested, completely confused by what had happened. When he came back to his room, he was very happy, and the other knights were shocked by the choice. The evening came. 
Hugo called the coma knight Ava had chosen to talk to him. The man told the boy that he was still very young and would probably fail. Alone, it meant that he had room to grow in the future. The boy stood silently and listened to everything that Hertz told him. Hugo came closer to the boy and smilingly asked him to take care of their Eva. At that moment, the boy remembered how, as a child, he was running away from bad people. He caught his foot on a branch and fell down, and that's how the murderers managed to catch up with him. One of them asked the boy if he thought he could get away from them. They talked about how killing a child was not the most pleasant thing to do, but it was an order they had to obey. Waving his hand at the boy, one of the killers said that they had been kind to the little orphan. The boy closed his eyes and suddenly felt a man appear in front of him. It was Hugo. Then he told the boy to follow him. It was he who decided to give him a chance. He was a ray of light in the terrible darkness. He was the one who brought the boy out of poverty and made him a respectable knight. And instead of becoming a simple hired killer, the boy went to destroy those who posed a threat to their empire. The Duke of Artan was a light and a god to the boy, so the knight could not let him down. The boy swore that he would do everything to make sure that the girl was okay. Then he added that his soul belonged entirely to the little lady. The next day, in the morning, the little girl was sleeping peacefully in her crib, gently hugging her favorite toy. At that moment, her brother entered the room and touched her cheek with his finger. Cedric asked Ava if she was still asleep. He added that the sun was already high. The girl replied that this was not true, because it was still morning. Cedric smiled and agreed with her, saying that only little children stayed in bed for so long. The boy noticed that the girl had recently said that she was already an adult and even wanted to learn how to fight with swords. Eva smiled and said that she had changed her mind and ran up to the boy to pick her up. When Arkin left the room, he saw that Cedric was carrying their little sister. He smiled and said that recently, the girl had claimed to be very old, and at that moment she came in her brother's arms. Opening one eye, the girl said that she was a little girl in the morning and an adult in the evening. Since it was morning, she thought she was a child. Then she added that Arkan did not understand anything at all. Cedric put her in a chair at the table and smiled and said that their me was still a child. Suddenly, Ava saw that there was a letter next to her plate. She was surprised and picked it up. Her brothers came to the chair and stood next to her, smiling and wondering what it could be. Ava began to unpack the letter. When she opened it, she saw that it was an invitation addressed to Evelia von Artina. One of the knights was walking down the hall. At that moment, suddenly, he heard a sharp sound and as if someone pushed him in the shoulder. Turning his head back, the boy saw a small young lady who smiled at the knight and called him by the name of Harold. The knight immediately ran to the girl and picked her up and greeted her. They were both very happy to see each other. The girl took the letter and showed it to the boy. Harold read it and realized that it was an invitation from the Marquis of Cassis. Since ancient times, the Cassis family has been famous for its many outstanding magicians. At that time, the Marquis of Cassis was a close comrade in arms of His Majesty the Emperor and their Lord the Duke. They went through many difficulties together. The Herald was upset and said that he would have no one to play with if the girl went to the Marquis. Ava looked at her friend excitedly. Then she wagged her finger at the boy and said that he was already very old, so he could have gone and played by himself a long time ago. With a serious face, she asked the boy when he would finally grow up. The hero was embarrassed because he could not believe that a three-year-old girl the size of a cup of tea was asking him when he would finally grow up. He thought it was too much for the little lady. A few days later, a carriage pulled up to the castle. Hugo and Alicia were on their way to the event. At that moment, Ava was playing sweetly with the Herald. Alicia turned to the girl and told her that it was time to go. Taking her favorite toy, the girl told her friend that she would be back soon. The Herald stopped the little beauty and told her to show what they had recently taught her. The girl agreed and clenched her hands into fists and said that she had memorized everything. The Herald asked the girl what she should do if a demon appeared on the road. The girl shouted out that she would have to scare him, but they smiled at him and at first said that it was very nice, but not to upset the little princess, they said it was very brave. Then they smiled and said that no demon would actually attack her. One of the knights smiled and asked what little Ava should say to a stranger who asked her to eat with him. Hugging her toy, the little girl replied that she would not agree to it because she was not allowed to, and if someone patted her head, she would just kick him. 
The herald said that the little princess was a good girl. Smiling, he said that the lady's legs were short, and she would not reach the most important places. And finally, the knight asked the coma what the girl would do if someone pulled her somewhere. Eva answered that she would scream at that moment. At that moment, Hugo was watching all this from the carriage. The man realized that the knights were not wasting their time with Eva. Alicia interrupted the conversation and said that someone should tell the knights to stop teaching the girl all the time about all sorts of pointless things. He smiled and said that they had finally done something worthwhile. That day, he allowed them to stop training and rest. Alicia looked at Hugo and thought that her husband was becoming a round fool when it came to his daughter. At that moment, Eva ran up to her father. In her opinion, these were the knights of the coma who seemed to be very sad, but turned out to be very violent. The knights ran up to the carriage and asked to be taken to the party. At this point, Hugo said that only Karen and Eden would go. On the way, Alicia kept thinking about what would happen when Ava grew up. The woman recalled how once, while passing, the girl saw a toy hare through the carriage windows. Hugo immediately ordered to buy one for her. At that moment, Ava just wanted to show him how big he was, and then her father decided to make a bear friend for his daughter. He became Ava's only friend in eating, sleeping, and playing. This teddy bear was a jack of all trades, but he nevertheless complimented the existing forest of toys. Riding in the carriage, the girl hugged her favorite toy. She considered it a real friend. During the trip, Eva asked Cedric if she could find many friends there. The boy immediately thought about it and did not even know what to answer his little sister. After thinking for a few minutes, he said that besides them, there would be children from other families there. So he thought that the girl would be able to make friends with someone. Eva looked at her brother fascinated. She liked this answer and was even happy about it. Hugo was the only Duke of the Empire. His fame was as great as it was difficult. Many people put on a mask of benevolence and became close to the Duke for the sake of occasional gain. Others tried to find out about his weaknesses and engaged in open hostility with him. In such situations, finding a true friend was like grabbing a star with your hand. He really hoped that his star would not be damaged by this, and Eva, hugging her favorite toy, hoped that it would make many friends. But her father did not stop worrying about the topic so that the truth of the other world would not bring her much pain. The family arrived at their destination. At the entrance, they were met by a young boy with outstretched hands. He said that they had not seen each other for a long time. The man could not even remember the last time the Duke had visited them. The Duke replied that he had been holding back and had not come until the man himself showed up at his office in the Imperial Palace and begged him through tears to come. He smiled and said that he really wanted to see his daughter rather than him. He smiled at that. Hugo replied that even if he had come to visit him, he would have hidden his daughter from that man. At that moment, the incredible little Princess Eva came out of the carriage. With her head bowed low, she greeted him and wished their family magical prosperity. After that, the girl introduced herself. The man looked at the lady with joy and said that the little princess had grown a lot since they had last seen each other. Then the Marquis decided to introduce them to his daughter and son. The boy came closer and introduced himself by name and Ikrin Cassis and met the girl. He came closer to the girl, took her hand and kissed her. After that, Ikrian thanked the little princess from the bottom of his heart for visiting them. At that moment, the girl remembered how her father had given her instructions on the way. He said that she should not get close to the heir to the Cassis family, Ikrian. The father said that the boy was a bandit and would not spare even a sheep. Recalling those words, Eva immediately realized that the boy looked like a sweet fox. His little sister's name was Lillian. The boy invited her to meet her. The girl came closer and introduced herself to the Ariani family. Bowing, she expressed her hope that they would become friends. Then, the Marquis came closer to the girls and said that their Lillian was very weak and had no friends at all. He suggested that the girl would be incredibly happy if she and Eva became friends. Liliana thought that Eva was the daughter of a duke from the noble and noble Arten family. She assumed that Eva might not have liked a weak and cowardly girl like her. Eva approached Liliana and took her hand. She invited her to become friends. Sometimes, no reason was needed to become real friends. They thought that in the future, they would often remember that time. It was the moment when their eyes first met. It was the moment when they intuitively felt that they would become friends forever.
Meanwhile, everyone entered the castle. The girls sat down on the floor, near a small table where many toys were scattered. Liliana opened a box of cookies and gave them to her new friend. At that moment, the Marquis family realized who they had been so proud of all day. After all, Eva had beautiful golden hair and ocean-colored eyes. She was a favorite of the spirits. But still, it was immediately obvious that she was different from Liliana. She was like a little star. When one of Eva's brothers saw Ikrian's look, he turned to him and told him not to even dream of harming her. The boy smiled and said that Arkin shouldn't even worry, because he liked the older ones. He said that in his opinion, a mature lady was much better than a little girl. The brothers were shocked by Ikrian's response. At that moment, the boy said that he would feel very sorry for the poor man she would fall in love with. After all, he would have to deal with her two brothers. Hearing this, Arkan ran up to the boy and said that they would never allow the girl to have a lover. That's when Ikrian realized that the boy was the number two problem. He didn't know who Ava's lover would be, but apparently, it seemed to him that every second his life would hang in the balance. Meanwhile, Eva's parents were invited to a picnic in their beautiful garden. It was a picnic for adults. They also went to the backyard. There they saw a picture they did not like at all. Arkan said that it was a real hell. Ikrian turned to Arkan and suggested that they go sparring. He said that they hadn't spent much time training lately. At that moment, Arkan said that was the most important thought. Cedric raised his hand and said he would go with them because fencing was very important. Looking at the hell that was going on around them, even fencing seemed worthwhile. At that moment, the boys remembered that Eva and Liliana were with them. They suggested that the girls come with them and play with them. Eva told them that she wanted to stay there because she thought it would be interesting, that they would stay together. Ikrian was surprised by his sister's decision and said that she would never leave his side. After that, the boyfriend agreed and said that if anyone offended them, they should definitely call them. At that moment, Eva told the boys not to worry because she could take care of herself. The girl's brothers told her to call them in any situation and not to take things to the extreme. The boys hoped that nothing would happen to the girls. They believed that they did not need to see blood at such a young age. At this point, everyone turned their heads and looked at Duke Arton's daughter. The children discussed that she was an incredible beauty. Her hair was very shiny. At that moment, a girl came up to me. She gave her name as Mortgen Karn. She was the daughter of Count Karen. The girl said that she had heard a lot about Eva. Then, many unknown girls began to flock to the little princess and invited her to tea if she had the opportunity. At that moment, it seemed to Eva that the time had come to fight for her life and death. Suddenly, meanwhile, a girl in a beautiful red dress approached the girl. She asked if Eva was the daughter of Duke Arton. She said her name was Ceres. She was the daughter of the Marquis of Defont. Ava was sitting on a bench, and when she saw the young girl, she was very happy to meet her. Ceres asked Ava if she had ever been taught that it was not a sign of good manners to come to a party and make such a fuss. The girl smiled and said that Ava might not have quite understood the rules of etiquette yet. She said that the girl was not worried and decided to help her with this. When several people greeted her at the same time, she had to stand up and greet them respectfully. It seemed that Ava did not know much. Then she said that there was nothing to be ashamed of, because the girl was still very young. Eva listened attentively and did not understand what she meant. Eva couldn't remember where she had heard the name Defont before. When she remembered, she realized that it was the same slippery type of Defont. Eva realized that this girl was a copy of her father. At that moment, Eva thought that she would be her savior because she looked so cute. But then the little princess realized that the queen was even dumber than she was, the daughter of the most powerful man in the empire, the first beauty in the country, and the future queen of socialites, the closest friend of the empress's successor. All these words used to belong to the Serena. At least, that's what everyone thought before Ava Artina was born. About two years ago, when the girl celebrated her first birthday and the whole country learned about her, at one point, the Serena lost everything. Ceres believed that Eva lacked stars from the sky, and there was nothing special about her. In addition, she heard that soon the Arton family was going to end. And when it happened, Ceres dreamed of being able to push Eva around like a slave. She looked down on the little girl and asked her if the knights had returned to the capital. Then she added that the city was talking about how the knights had fled from the front in fear of demonic creatures. 
This made the little princess very angry. Siri smiled and said that the girl finally showed at least some reaction. Looking at Ceres with a frown, Ava asked how she dared to insult her knights. At this point, she invited little Undine over. Eve said that she was not going to tolerate insults to her knights. At that moment, something strange began to happen near the children. The shadow of an unknown creature appeared. One of the children shouted out that it was Dantalion. Who was the boy talking about? Demons were basically divided into two categories. Ordinary demons and the 72 Lamegaton demons, who had exceptional power. Ordinary demons were completely and unquestioningly devoted to them. The Dantalians, however, did not obey the 72 demons and were branded as apostates. They were completely expelled from the demon lands and as a result had to survive by eating scraps that fell from the farthest corners. They had neither arrogance nor fear. The only thing that drove them was the desire to tear apart everything that got in their way. At that moment, one of the demons grabbed Eve and threw her to the ground. No one could understand what was happening, and only the queen stood there smiling. Then Eve turned to Undina for help, but she thought that the creature could have eaten her too. This made the little girl cry. Ava tried to fight the monster, but at one point she began to call her brothers for help. At that moment, her brother came running to the girl's aid and asked if she was okay. Everyone quickly rushed to the girls, and Arkin shouted that Eva should be taken to a safe place quickly. Ikrian went up to the boy and told him not to make a big hero out of himself. Arkin was thinking about what he should do, because it was impossible to take Dantalians by the dozen, and to resist too was considered a feat. At that moment, the Duke approached them. Seeing the tense atmosphere, he asked what was going on. When the man saw the Dantalians, he could not understand what they were doing there. He quickly drew his sword and tried to deal with them. He believed that they had no right to attack his daughter. The Duke could not understand why demons appeared in the yard at all, in the civilized modern world. At that moment, the knights appeared. They told the Duke not to dirty his sword and that they would deal with them themselves. Meanwhile, Ava went to the Marquis' apartment. The knights sat and thought about how no one knew what might happen to their little princess in the harsh outside world. Then one of them said, the little princess said that she wanted to take a teddy bear with her, so they decided to go to a toy shop. One of the knights said that the duke had forbidden them to follow them to the Marquis's house. But if they went to the fence of the Marquis's house, it would not count as a violation of the order, because they would be outside the house. One of the knights said he saw the fence a few days ago. The garden where the lady would be was just on the left side. At that moment, the boys were walking by the fence and thinking about the little princess. As they approached the gate, they realized that they had arrived at their destination. Then they heard a little girl calling for help, so they came to her aid. The knights shouted, however, that it was all their fault that their lady had stumbled and was crying. The duke was not at all happy that the knights had appeared there. He was sure that it was his own fault for believing them, that those Cretans would just sit idly by. All the guests were surprised at how quickly the knights managed to deal with a dozen Dantalians. When the girl saw her knights, she burst into tears. They were not the boys she knew. Karen picked up a little bunny and gave it to Eve. When the girl saw it, she hugged the boy. One of the knights was offended because he was very sly and gave the toy he had bought to the little princess. The duke wondered who had summoned the Dantalions. Everyone started shouting, however, that they had been summoned on purpose in the kindergarten where the children were. Besides, that day was the first time they had an outdoor picnic. Their target was Eve. Eve was told to call Undine, and she would find the one who had summoned the Dantalions. The girl called Undine, and she immediately found the one who had summoned the demons and pointed to him. It was one of the boys, but he denied everything. He said it wasn't true, and he even went to church and didn't miss a day. The Duke ordered to call the priests and ask them. According to the law of their country, a person who made a deal with demons had to be dealt with immediately on the spot. The only question was whether to deal with him there or to send him to the emperor. After all, it would be nice to visit an old friend. The Duke ordered the detention of Count Malone. At that moment, a young girl approached Hugo. She said that before making her decision, she had something to tell him. When the Dantalions appeared, Miss Eva tried to step back. One of them, Count Malona's daughter, pushed her towards the demons. And she said that Mrs. Artina just stumbled when she got out of her chair. Undina also confirmed the girl's words. She said that everyone saw what really happened. That girl pushed their little Ava. Count Malona's daughter still denied what the others said. 
Her father summoned demons, and his daughter pushed the Duke's daughter in their direction. As it turned out, someone had ordered them to deal with Artin's daughter. After he gets the power in his hands and Lillian becomes their mistress, he will be given the title of Marquis. That was the agreement. The man said that he would have his back. The Duke returned to the harness and ordered the boy to come to him. He told him to take Eva and the other children with him and lead them away. Except for young Mrs. Defont and Mrs. Malone. Arkin approached the girl and asked her to come with him. Ava looked at her father and realized that he was very angry. Arkin hugged the little princess and told her that everything would be fine. Then he added that the demons had almost gotten to her. If they had waited a little longer, they would never have seen little Eva again. Arkin said that if his father did not do it, he would deal with them himself. The Duke had to deal with the Count and his daughter right there and then. Therefore, there would not be a single person in the country who could condemn him. At that moment, the knights rushed to deal with the enemies. Meanwhile, the Duke approached the Marquis of Defont and put his sword to him. He asked the man if he thought that Hugo would not find out about his dark deeds. The man began to smile and pretended to be comatose, as if he did not understand what he was asking him. He said that the Duke would explain it to him, but first, he would take the sword away from his head. The Marquis told the Duke that there was no evidence that he was behind the attempt to kill his daughter. The man looked him in the eye and said that he could not have killed him right there. Hugo was very angry. He told the man to take a good look. The laws of the Empire did not allow him to get rid of him at that moment, but human life was not always subject to laws. One of the men apologized to the Duke, but it was his fault for not watching the guests and his daughter was hurt. At that moment, Hugo replied that sooner or later, it had to happen. After all, two years ago, everyone saw the coma as Eva's manifestation of her abilities, but they thought that this should not have affected the children's souls in any way. The next day, Lillian and Eva were walking together in the yard. Eva called her comatose friend to look at a bunny she saw in the garden. At that moment, an unseen guard of knights came out of the bushes and smilingly asked the girl if she wanted them to catch it. With a furrowed brow, Eva replied that it was not possible to catch a bunny and ordered the knights to stand to the side and watch. She shouted, however, that she was off to find the bunny. The guards did not like it at all. Running into the woods, the girl saw the emerald in front of her and quickly rushed to it. As it turned out, it was on the ear of a boy. When he heard someone pulling on his ear, he turned around and saw little Eva. He asked her what she was doing there and how she had found him. Then, Eva asked who he was. The boy smiled and said that he was a demon. The girl did not understand what a demon was. She thought it was a devil. At that moment, the boy said that you can't compare a demon with devils. After that, the boy told her that he was one of the 72 demons who controlled the devils. And there, he was the second most important. At that moment, the girl did not know what to do. She realized that she had gotten into another story. Then she remembered what instructions the knights had given her and what to do if a demon appeared on the road. She began to follow all the instructions. But the demon was not affected at all, and he asked her if she was human to the beast. When he looked at her, he saw that she did not have the ears of an animal and that her claws were sharp. He also noticed that she had no tail. Then Eve said that she was a human and began to roar loudly. The boy stood in front of her and asked her why she was screaming like that. The girl replied that it was a scary scream, but this only made the boy laugh. Eve was angry at the demon's reaction. He replied that all demons laughed when they were very scared. The girl came closer and grabbed the boy's pants and asked him his name. At first, the demon wanted to tell her his name, but thought for a few minutes and answered that he did not tell others his name that easily. Hearing that the demon called himself Aha, the girl laughed and started calling him that. The boy did not like this and told her that she had no right to make fun of his great name. Meanwhile, the knights entered the forest in search of Eva. They shouted her name loudly, trying to reach her. At that moment, the demon realized that this child was from Artin's family. In addition, the smell of perfume was coming from her slightly. Normally, he would have killed her right away, but here, he decided to get to know her better. He sat down next to her and asked her name. The girl told him her name, and then the demon asked that their acquaintance and meeting be their secret. If the girl told anyone that she had seen the bunny, he would be very grateful to her. After that, the demon immediately disappeared. Her brothers and knights ran up to Eva. They asked her what she was doing there alone. One of the brothers immediately took her in his arms and hugged her tightly. Then, after thinking for a few minutes, 
Eva said that she had seen a bunny there and it was very cute. She hoped that someday she would meet the demon again. Meanwhile, the demon was thinking about his meeting with Eva. It had been a long time since humans had called for Dantalians, so he came to see. He thought it was very boring and he was too old for it. He laid down by a tree and decided to take a nap. He was still thinking about the meeting with little Eve. He had not met such interesting people for a very long time. He was an agoras. He was the second among the 72 demons. He was the ruler of the Eastern Hell. Meanwhile, little Eve's servants were worried about how their ward was spending her time. They heard that the girl had a hard time. At that moment, the women thought she was already asleep. One of the maids saw the Duke's carriage arrive at the house. The woman immediately shouted it out. The Duke brought little Eva into the house in his arms. When she opened her eyes, the girl could not understand why everyone had suddenly run there. After that, she smiled and said that she had seen everyone before she arrived. The little princess loved the atmosphere and shouted that she was back. With tears in their eyes, the servants welcomed the little girl back. They told the little princess that she was very brave and strong. After that, Ava immediately went to take a bath and changed her clothes and went to bed. When she entered her room, she saw that everything was covered with toys. The knights had given her many gifts. Ava was not quite happy with these gifts. She said that she would not have a place to live with them. After thinking for a few minutes, she asked the maid if she could give the rest of the toys to other children. The woman smiled and said that the little lady was very generous. Eva replied that there were just too many toys. The woman said goodnight and sleep well to the little princess and left. Then, little Eva saw the boy in front of her again. He smiled and said that he really was a very nice bunny. He then added that the girl wanted to see him again, and that is why he had come. The girl was very happy to see the boy. She said that he had come to her in a dream and invited him to play with her. Meanwhile, the water spirit remembered Eva and followed her. Before meeting her, he had only once had to deal with people. In all dimensions, people were selfish beings who were driven by petty fears. As a lord of spirits, he was able to see the essence of the soul, which is why he could distinguish the color of human souls. Even when he ran away from the sadness of the human world in search of entertainment, their souls were all black and sad. He was disgusted even to look at them. Perhaps there was a great deal of distrust of those creatures. Worthless carts were running back and forth. He would never have thought that in that unconditional world, there would be a person who believed in spirits. However, she behaved very strangely. To him, she was an incredible fool who drowned in an attempt to save the water spirit. Nevertheless, this fool saved Malyutka at the cost of her own life. That is why the spirit wanted to thank her. She was given a new life, but he vouched for her safety in the new world. This is how he repaid her. It seemed obvious to him that the girl, by virtue of her human nature, would raise a fuss as soon as she found out that she had died by mistake. Especially if she found out that she had to give her life not even for a person, but for a spirit. He thought the girl would be very sorry for her part. Fortunately, in the end, the spirit was fine. When the girl heard this, she was very happy. When he saw a grateful soul who had no equal among people for many thousands of years, it was simply impossible for him not to imitate and make a mistake. Despite the fact that she had forgotten her past life, the golden color of her soul had not changed at all. Sharing the joys and sorrows of her loved ones, she grew up with a bright smile on her face. And now, the spirit was just happy to follow the first steps of that girl. For the first time in his life, without any great meaning, he wanted to become a sword and shield for someone. However, there was no contract between them and he could not arbitrarily ignore the existing restrictions. Possessing a power comparable to that of a divine, he nevertheless could not influence people's lives. But the man was sure that Eve would call him one day. Meanwhile, the little girl in the red dress turned to her father with a claim that he had told her that something would definitely happen to Eve that day. She was very angry that their plan did not work. At that moment, the spirit of water turned to the man and asked him what he was thinking when he decided to approach the girl. The man had previously emphasized many times that if he wanted to oppose the Arten family, he had to be very careful. Gossip began to circulate in the Duke's estate that after a banquet in honor of Marquis Cassis's birthday, the Marquis de Fon's carriage had overturned for an unknown reason. Further details were never clarified. The Duke's men alone had no time to think about it. Meanwhile, the little princess approached Karen and called him by name. 
She caught him by the shirt and told him to come with her to find a secret shelter. Since Ava could create a whole commotion in the estate with just one word, the servant started laughing at her and said that she already needed a personal space. The girl did not like that everyone walked around her room whenever they wanted. It annoyed her a lot. She thought that if she wanted to spend time alone, she would really need a secret shelter. In search of a secret shelter, they went with Karen on horseback. The girl imagined her shelter to be like the one Cedric had read about in fairy tales. She wanted it to be surrounded by cute animals and flowers. She also dreamed that the sun would always shine and birds would sing there. Ava turned to Undina and asked her why there was no place with water, flowers, and cute animals anywhere. Her question made the little girl laugh. She was also very curious about what their bird would grow up to be. Eva smiled and said that the bird would grow into a bird. At that moment, they started arguing with Undina. Then Baby said that she knew where the perfect place to hide was. Undine said she would tell them, but only if Eva didn't do anything stupid. When the little princess heard this, she called the baby a genius and said that they shouldn't have wasted a minute. Then the little girl ordered Karen to go faster. After crossing the mountains and crossing the water, they found the beautiful town that Undine had spoken of. Eve was very enchanted and loved the place. When the knights heard that the lady was building a shelter for herself, they were shocked. The knights spared no effort in using their outstanding sword skills to work the wood, and the duke's people, who were watching, were preparing snacks for the secret shelter. For this purpose, they preserved everything. They also laid out beautiful furniture and searched for a magic coma stone that would drive away monsters. After that, they planted flowers everywhere. Everyone got involved in the creation of the secret shelter. As a result, by the end of the construction, every person in the estate knew about the secret shelter. The girl was very happy that she managed to create such a house. She had a wonderful necklace around her neck. It was with its help that Ava could come there even without Karen. Besides, it was a day for eating delicious cookies. The previous day, Eva had left half of her orange juice there to drink with the cookies that day. The girl sat down at the table and started eating the sweets. When she came back to her hut one day, she found that her cookies and juice were gone. The previous day, she thought she had dropped Vasya's orange juice, so she brought more, and when she came back the next day, she saw that her cookies and grape juice were gone. This made little Eva cry a lot and told the knights about it. After discussing it with each other, the boys realized that none of the jewelry was missing, but only the food was gone. Then one of the knights furrowed his brow and said that perhaps a little piggy similar to their little lady had snuck in. Little Eva was very angry at this and asked if the thieves of sweets were called piggies. Then, the brothers said that the secret hideout was supposed to be surrounded by cute animals, but as it turned out, it was a whole robbery den. Eva shouted, however, that she would never forgive them, even if they were pigs. Then she decided who would hunt them. Little Eva put out a plate of sweets in the yard. These were lures for thieves to steal the goodies. When the thieves came for the cookies, the girl wanted to catch them like a tiger. Eva was sure that she would be able to catch them all and find out who was stealing everything. She was sure that no one else would be able to do this. She stood in the middle of the room of her secret hideout and thought about having a little snack of cookies that were in a basket on the table. Looking at it, the girl decided that the traps did not need so many cookies. She took one from the basket and tasted it, but decided that she would eat only a little. After eating, the little princess was very sleepy. She hadn't thought it would turn out that way. When she woke up, she saw that the basket on the table was empty. This made her very angry, and she shouted that she would catch the thief and beat his ass. At that moment, someone was standing behind the little girl. When she saw the silhouette, the little girl was very scared. She screamed out loud and asked who it was. Eva thought it was the same little piggy who had eaten all her cookies. Suddenly, an unknown boy said that not only had she not shown respect for the owner of the land, but she had also built a house there without permission. Ava did not understand who he was talking to or why he thought it was his land. Leaning over to the girl, the boy said that she was still walking under the table and was already pointing at him. He said that the little girl should have respect for him. Ava did not understand why he was older and asked to be treated with respect. She assumed that he was the same age as her brothers, but she thought that the boy still did not know how to behave. The princess did not know how to address him at all. Then little Eva called him a boy. She asked him why the earth was his. Then the boy said that at first it was his secret place, 
and then it became her secret place. After that, the boy said that he should have been distracted for a while by important matters and left as soon as someone had already built a house there. Allah, he said that the cookies were delicious. Eva shouted out that they were her sweets. She realized that the boy wanted to say that the one who was there first was right. Eva said that she had built a house in the woods in a completely empty place and brought her sweets there and lived there in peace. She thought that she just had to prove to him that she was the first to get there. Then her godfather told her to follow him and he would show her something. On the ground between a pile of clay, the girl saw a suitcase that the boy had put there a long time ago and hidden his precious things inside. Only there could he be sure that they were safe. So he left them there. Then he asked, do you still have any doubts that he was there first? Then Eva shouted out that she was very lucky. The guy did not understand what she was talking about. She said that she had succeeded, as if he wanted to bury her there. Eva looked at the boy and said that the candy thief was not so bad. The boy smiled and asked which of the two of them wanted to kick his ass. He then added that he was not a good man either. Then he said that maybe he should kick the ass of the thief who stole his land. Eve was very angry and said that it could not be that the thief who had stolen her cookies and her juice wanted to punish her. The girl could not let that happen. So she smiled sweetly and asked the boy if he wanted some cookies. The stranger thought she was trying to bribe him. I understood that she failed because the boy was very smart. Then she suggested that they share her hut together. After thinking about it for a few minutes, the stranger said that this would not be enough. Then he told her to leave more cookies and juice there in the future, then he said he would not mind a roommate at all. Afterwards, Eva told her brothers that a rascal had brazenly broken into her quiet and modest town, and he had stolen her precious supplies of goodies, and he never stopped mocking her, demanding that she bring more. One of the brothers said that no one had the right to torment their Eva. For the sake of their little sister, he immediately went to fight him. He told the girl to wait for him outside and not to go inside. As it turned out, I was just reading a book to you. The events from it inspired her to deal with him. She realized that she could not go to her secret hideout because of some thief. Although she had an unenviable fate, he didn't look like a bad thief. This meant that she had to keep quiet and not tell anyone about him. She wanted to grow up a bit and also learn sword fighting and become a spiritual magician and then deal with him personally. At that moment, the brothers did not understand why the girl was so excited. They assumed that she simply did not like the fairy tale. After that, Ono turned to the chef, calling him by the name of Seth. Eve asked if he was very busy. The girl said, comma, if he had a free minute, that he would give her some dough. She decided to try to make the buns herself so that she could give them to her family. Slowly, she decided that her revenge would come true. Seth replied that he had no right to refuse the little princess. It was his job to do everything he could for the little lady. The man was very touched by the little girl's request. He handed Eva a bowl of dough and told her to put in all the ingredients she wanted to add. After that, he said that he would cook everything and bring it back. Eva was very happy to be helped and thanked the man. The first step on the path of her revenge came. She turned to Undina and said that she needed an accomplice. She asked the little girl to help her add mustard and wasabi to the dough. Undina did not understand why the little princess needed to do this. Eva replied that she had to take revenge on someone. She reassured Undine and said that it was not for her family. Then she added that the thief of her sweets should get what he deserved. Undina thought that there was going to be trouble. The little girl suggested that Eva should do something more useful. Eve said that she wanted to give the thief the bitterness of enchantment and tears of suffering. She told Undina to make sure that no adults came in. Undina agreed to help the little girl. She understood that whatever Eva was planning, she could not do anything about it. The sweets were ready, and little Eva brought them to her secret hiding place. An unknown boy was already waiting for her, and when he saw the sweets, he said that Eva was a real good girl. He then reached for another cookie and told the girl to keep up the good work. Eva smiled and waited for the boy's reaction to the cookies with a surprise inside. She told him that it was a devil's biscuit she had personally created, consisting of everything she had at hand, and she was waiting for the boy to start eating it and then suffer from pain. Suddenly, the boy put the biscuit down and said he wanted to ask Eve something. This made the girl very angry because she wanted the boy to taste her sweets. 
Then, the boy said that they should keep the whole story about the girl building her shelter on his land a secret. He also wanted Eva not to tell anyone that she had met him there. After that, he said that if she wanted to, they might never see him again. Eva was not happy about this, because she wanted to take revenge on him when she became an adult. She realized that she would not be able to do so if they never met again. Sitting down at the table, the little princess asked the boy why they couldn't tell anyone about it. She didn't understand why they had to hide it. Then she added that everyone knew that he was a rascal with a vile character who had stolen her secret hiding place. She did not understand what else she had to hide. After thinking for a few minutes, she asked if the boy meant to say that he was not just a thief who had eaten all her supplies, but a real criminal and robber. Smiling, the boy said that he was a thief and a robber. That's why he told Eve to be careful. At that moment, he took a cookie and tasted it. Then he warned her that every day, he would come by and eat all of her biscuits. When Eva heard this, she got very angry and grabbed a pine cone in her hands and threw it right at him. The boy got up from his chair and asked the girl why she was throwing something. Eva called him a nasty boy. After that, she said that she would deal with him someday. The boy held his head and realized that from the very first words about his ass, he should have understood everything, but he still didn't want to think about it. He assumed that the gossip that Duke Arton's daughter was a quiet and modest girl was greatly exaggerated. Then the boy missed that he could have frightened her badly as she threw a lump at him and ran away. Justifying himself by saying that Eve had left him the only place to rest, he began to give away the food he had so carefully stored to wild animals. And once, having invented completely absurd dialogues, he even tried to take away that house from her. Nevertheless, no matter what he did, she stayed by his side. For the first time in a long time, he felt so easy with someone. He could finally feel at ease. Four years ago, after his mother's death, he had to live with danger every second of the day. And then, he was not the crown prince of an empire, but an ordinary, unimportant child. Squeezing the cone in his palm, the boy mentally apologized to little Eva for going overboard. Of course, he said that they might never meet again, but he would be very happy to play together again. When the boy tried to eat the bun again, he realized that it was very spicy. This made him angry, and he decided to take revenge on the thief of his land. Meanwhile, the girl was very angry. As it turned out, the reason why the thief ate the bun and remained unharmed was that she had simply confused them. The brothers did not understand why little Eva had prepared such buns for them. When the princess looked through the doorway, she realized that something was wrong. After she hit the thief with a pine cone and suddenly ran away to her house, she immediately had a lot of things to do. At first, she was angry with the thief for a while and stopped coming to her shelter. Meanwhile, autumn had already changed to winter, and little Eva turned four years old. And in order to finally get rid of that thief, the girl decided to learn fencing. So, wearing an outfit Vivian had made for her, the girl secretly started training. She enjoyed the winter, but also practiced. Since spring was coming soon, it meant that the Festival of Blessings was about to arrive. The little princess had asked permission to go with Heron and Cedric in advance. She was in great anticipation. After all, the knights and her family would finally witness her skills. The knights laughed at the princess and said that it was the first time they had ever seen someone from Arton's family do something so bad. Eva was sure that she would succeed until the knights laughed at her. So, Eva made a firm decision. She wanted to become recognized as the best fencer and, together with Alex, finally punish that thief. However, she could not even imagine that everything would turn out differently. In fact, the girl could not even imagine in her dreams how everything would turn out. In the courtyard of the secret shelter, little Eva began training. She believed that she had to become a real professional. That's when the thief would bow down to her at every step. At that moment, she heard someone's voice behind her. Someone asked her if she was too ambitious for such a fool. Eve was frightened when she heard the stranger. She thought the thief had come again. She did not understand why he always appeared so unexpectedly. Then she ordered Undine to throw a bucket of water on him immediately. Someone shouted out that it was very dangerous and told the girl not to make him chase it away. Eva was very scared when she heard that voice. It was a demon. He caught Undine and told her that she was only putting herself in danger if she touched his demonic energy with something so trivial as a tail. Eva realized that it was not the thief, but the bunny. 
Turning her head, she immediately asked him how he got there, because it was forbidden for a demon to enter. The boy replied that there was not enough of a protective barrier against demons to keep him out. Then he asked her why she was going to call him a bunny. This hurt his demonic ego, so he asked her to think of another name. Eve did not understand why the boy did not like that name. Then, the little princess told him to choose between bunny and goat. This made the demon very angry, and he said that she had no right to make up such nicknames. Then he told the girl to call him just AC. She liked that name, and then she told the demon to go away. He didn't understand why Ava chased him away right away. Then she told him that it was her secret hiding place. The little princess did not understand how the demon could find her again. She said that she had worked very hard to find this place. The demon replied that the energy of spirits was very rare. He felt its lightness and was curious about it, so he came there. Smiling, he said that he saw there a not-so-warm person waving a sword in vain. He laughed and said that the girl was possessed by a sword demon. The princess turned to Undina and asked if she could have really splashed water on him. The little girl replied that little Eva had no idea what could have happened if he had not hidden his demonic energy. Unfortunately, Undine could not resist such a powerful demon. Only their master could do it. The demon turned to the girl and asked her if she realized that the nickname of the hare did not suit him at all. Then I realized that the demon was as strong as the Lord of Spirits. Crying, the little princess realized that she would never be able to learn to swing a sword. She asked if she was really that bad at it. Looking at the girl who was not crying, the demon said that it was not so bad because it was the first time she had ever picked up a sword. Then, AC decided to show her how to use it properly. He told her to put her feet shoulder-width apart because the swing of the sword had to be in a straight line. The guy told her to repeat after him. After we did, the guy said that little Eva did not bend her knees, and then he realized that she was doing everything correctly. He also added that she should not forget about the direction of her hands. The girl understood everything. AC said that he was not used to lying or teaching anyone. Then he added that he felt bad about it, but that the little lady was a good girl. He found it quite amusing to watch the little girl's movements just like that. He told her to keep up the good work. After that, he told the girl to come to that place more often, and he would teach her. Then Eva said she would not do that. Eva said that her family had told her that devils were all very stingy and evil and that you could not be friends with them. Moreover, the worst of them could seem kind and then suck all her blood. She thought it was horrible. He also agreed with her, but he was a real devil. Therefore, the main character could not let him wrap her around his finger and suck all her blood and become a blood thief. The girl immediately shouted out, however, that it was completely tasteless, and he realized that Eva treated him like some kind of worthless devil. Then he decided to play with her a little. At that moment, he began to transform and called her lazy. He said that only then did the girl realize what was going on. This made Ava very scared. He was getting closer and closer to her and said that someone was smelling a very sweet aroma. At that moment, the demon heard someone's voice behind Eva. Someone shouted at him to get away from the girl. It was the thief of the sweets. He said that it would not be good if someone caught the earthly thief. At that moment, the demon caught Eve by her clothes. He said that the young man had been shamelessly standing there watching them, and then he started to be rude to him. Then he added that young people were not taught to respect others at all. Frowning, the boy said that there was hardly a single person in that country to whom he should bow his head. Then the demon said that he was not a man at all. The boy asked what he was anyway. Meanwhile, the little princess thought that she not only had to run away from the blood thief, but also from the thief of goodies especially since they had started some kind of dialogue with each other. The girl thought that they could unite and attack her together. She thought that she should strike first. The girl interrupted the conversation and asked the thief if they had ever been to a blessing festival. She said she had never been there before. So she asked their mother to tell them how the festival was because she was very curious. She told them not to quarrel, but to just talk. Afterwards, Eva said that she was very interested to hear their stories about the Festival of Blessing. The girl was very happy that everything went according to plan. But, at that moment, the demon said that if she was interested in the festival, then he was the best at it. He then added that, back when the local emperors called themselves kings, there was no festival he would not attend. 
He knew all about the Festival of Gratitude that they held in their Arcadian Empire. AC decided that this was his chance to get rid of that boy, because then no one would interfere with them. He turned to Eve and told her that if she was interested in anything, she should ask him and not listen to that boy. Eve was very happy and asked if the demon really knew where she should go. She told him that she had asked her family and friends many times. The knights told her that the best part of this festival was the local contests, and the parents said that they usually watched the fireworks and had fun as if they were meeting for the first time. Afterwards, the girl said that her mother and everyone else told her about some nonsense that they didn't like at all. The demon wondered where to start the story. He wondered if he should start telling her about restaurants with delicious food and pastry shops, or something else. At that moment, a boy interrupted the conversation and said that he would rather tell the girl about the most interesting places. He added that, after all, the festivals of that empire were best known to those who lived there. After all, this boy was the hereditary principal of the empire. Therefore, he told the girl not to listen to the talk of that lazy boy, because he was wandering around in their country in ancient times and thought he knew something. At that moment, the demon said that the boy continued to be rude to him. He then added that he did not envy the young man at all. The crown prince did not know how long the real estate thief had known the man, but he had been waiting for five months for him to reappear in their secret hideout, so he was definitely not going to sit silently if that man wanted him to. The demon said that it was not right for him to let his hands go in front of the boy. He thought it was a big mess. Then he said that people usually had a lot to do, so the demon suggested that the boy go somewhere else. Furrowing his brow, the boy asked the demon if he meant that he was not human. At that moment, Ava interrupted the conversation and pointed her finger at the man, and said that he was not a person, but a demon. The girl said that he had recently tried to suck all the blood out of her. At the same time, she smiled sincerely. When the boy heard this, he was shocked. He thought that the girl was on the side of the demon. He missed the fact that she just decided to play a joke. Of course, the prince had heard that demons could enter their world, but he did not expect to meet them like this. Judging by the color of the demon's hair and pupils, the prince realized that it was the same demon that had ended the first war between demons and humans. He was one of the few who had been friendly to humans. At that moment, his eyes lit up with red flames, and the boy called him the ruler of the Eastern Hell. The demon smiled and asked the prince if he would attack him, because he also knew who the boy was. One look was enough to realize that he was the crown prince. Ava pointed her finger at the boy and said that at first glance it was clear that he was the real thief of her goodies. She shouted that the thief had stolen all her cookies and juice. Then Trent asked if the girl was on the side of that demon. He said that she was sitting next to him and did not understand what was going on. After that, he turned to the demon and said that he could not know anything good about the Blessing Festival because he was always sitting in the East. Then the demon replied that he was simply not in the mood to go out, and that is why he was sitting there. He then said that even if the prince wanted to go out, he would not be able to do so. That's why he noticed the commas that they were absolutely equal. In addition, considering how long the demon had lived in that world, some boy who was still walking under the table was not even fit to be his assistant. At this point, the little princess interrupted the conversation again and told the boys to stop quarreling. Stopping them, she said that both the bunny and the thief were kinder, so they had to be kinder to each other. After that, Eve told them to behave normally. The boys looked at each other and did not understand why the little princess was so angry and ordered them around as if they were some kind of dogs. She shouted, however, that they should not even look each other in the eye, stop fighting, and quickly tell her about the blessing festival. Ava pulled them by their clothes and the boys were shocked by this. They said that the little princess was behaving like a dog. Then the demon said that they had to visit Phoenicia. They had a lot of delicious food on the menu, including a wonderful cheesecake. At that moment, the prince realized that the man did know something and was not as stupid as he thought. The demon continued to tell him that shrimp and meat were taken and fried in olive oil. After that, it was poured with a special sauce and served with bread. He added that among the confectionery dishes, Ferroni was considered the most delicious. They had a dessert called Mon Chouchou, which was a thin cake filled with chocolate cream. It was the dessert recommended for all sweets lovers. After that, 
The guy added that there were usually a lot of people there, so you had to book a place in advance. Eva was very surprised by this information. She assumed that all these things had to be very tasty. The boy said that even if it was packed with people, if you introduced yourself to someone from Artin's family, they would definitely come up with something and let you in. After all, at that moment, he was not the Crown Prince Louis, but a simple food thief from a secret shelter. At that moment, Eva said that she had managed to write something down and asked the boy to check it. The prince said that everything was written correctly and suggested that she add certain stores to the list that he had mentioned. At that moment, Eva remembered that the boys had told her that there was going to be a parade there. She asked if people were just watching or maybe doing something else. Princip replied that for ordinary people in the city, watching everything was the most enjoyable part of the holiday. He then said that it would be a shame if a cute kid like her just watched without participating. There were several reasons why people at that festival loved the parade the most. One of them was a very old belief. Usually, in the center of the procession, in one of the carriages, there was a parade manager. And if they caught sight of a child, they could not only bless him or her, but also put him or her in the carriage and let him or her shower the road with petals. According to the belief, if you grab such a petal, you will definitely be lucky for the next year. So it was simply impossible to miss this. Hearing this, Eva was very surprised and impressed. She asked where was the best place for her to stand at that moment. The demon said that in his opinion, it would be best to climb the fountain that stood near the clock tower in the main square. He took a pencil in his hand and offered to draw a map for the girl. Eva was very happy with this offer and thanked the demon. Then the little princess shouted out that she was very lucky that day. After all, if luck was on her side, she would give all the petals to her friends and family. Looking at the boys, she said that even their thieves were not spared. After that, A asked with whom the girl planned to go to the festival. He realized that if she went with him, all the leaves would be his. Without thinking twice, I told him that I was going with my brothers. The boys were shocked to hear this. They realized that she definitely did not consider them brothers. Then Ava replied that she meant her brother Cedric, because he had agreed to go with her earlier. Raising her hand, the little girl thanked the boys and said that she had one more important thing to do that day. She said goodbye and walked away. The boys were left alone. They were not going to fight without Ava. Louis said that he had nothing to talk about with the demon. It was hard for him to return to the palace like that after everything. But the festival that Eva was going to see for the first time was going to be the most magnificent and solemn festival ever. He wanted to do everything he could to make it happen. Meanwhile, one of the knights was holding his shoulder and thinking that the little lady had some very serious jokes. He never thought he would be exploited like this. He realized that in the future, he had to be more careful in front of strangers. Looking out the window, the boy realized that time had flown by. There, he saw a family picture. He didn't have time to blink, and they had to go to the Blessing Festival in Spain together. Hugo said to the girl that, unfortunately, they had to personally accompany His Imperial Majesty, so she had to go to the festival without them. The father apologized to the girl. Turning to Karen and Cedric, he said that they should definitely have a great time, and the main instruction was that they should not lose each other. The Duke asked Eva what she should do if someone asked her to go out with him. The little princess replied that her father would come and find him soon. And if he suddenly dragged her somewhere by force, or cast an evil spell, the girl had to call for Nina and hit him with a strong stream on his legs and then run away. After that, her father asked who was responsible for her. Eva answered that it was Artin's family, and no matter what happened, she would always stand up for her. When Eva approached the festival itself, she was fascinated by everything she saw. Everything smelled delicious. There were a lot of different people in different sights. At that moment, a knight said that a little lady's purse was open, he offered to close it. Eva obeyed him and closed her purse. Shedrick said that the girl should give him her hand, but little Eva did not listen to what she was told and was completely focused on the festival. When she saw the sign for Fenizzi, she suggested that Cedric go there. It was the same pastry shop that the thief had recommended. Together, they decided to go there. When the knight saw the line, he assumed that they would have to stand in it for a long time. Eva thought that when people found out who she was, they would let her through without waiting in line. Then she asked where Karen was going, because the line started on the other side. 
Hearing this from the little princess, the boy bowed his head and apologized to her. He knew that their little lady was very kind, but he could not even think that her thoughts were so pure. Ava was very pleased and said that it was wonderful that the festival was open to everyone. Once inside, the girl noticed that both in Fenici and Ferona, the food was just plain plain good. She asked Cedric about it and he agreed with her. The guy was surprised who only that young body could swallow the food. After that, we went further together. Suddenly, Eva saw some unknown scary faces in the crowd. She quickly ran to Cedric and said that she was very scared. The girl explained that there were non-humans there and she was very afraid of them. At such moments, everyone realized that she was just a child. Cedric calmed his little sister down and told her mother that they were coma people who just put on masks and there was nothing to be afraid of. Karen replied that the girl could trust him. He suggested that perhaps they were supposed to be acting out a skit. The boy suggested that they go and ask what it was supposed to be about. After that, they went to watch the performance. When they returned, they realized that Eva was missing. When they looked up, they saw that the little girl was standing next to a vendor. Cedric asked her what she was doing there alone and said that the girl had scared them very much. Eva apologized to them for what she had done. She said that she would not do it again, but she wanted to buy some fruit in return. Say. Somewhere was shocked that his little sister was hungry again. He said it was certainly not a problem and asked if she had any pocket money left. He was talking about the coma money her mother had put in her purse. At this point, the little princess was embarrassed and said that she had no money left. The kindergarten teacher did not understand where the girl had managed to spend so much money. Eva replied that she had shared it with her friends. When the boy heard this, he praised her. That day, Eva opened up from different angles, but her brother was worried that she might make enemies because of her friendliness. Then he decided that he would have to ask his mother to talk to the little princess. At that moment, Eva said that she was thirsty and decided to call Undine. But Cedric objected and said that once again, there was no need to show the spirits to outsiders. Cedric thought that the little girl probably didn't even realize that an ordinary person could live for a whole week on that kind of money. At that moment, Karen said he decided to go buy the little lady a little water. He didn't tell Cedric to stay with her in that place. Meanwhile, his brother decided to buy a barbecue. The boy told little Eva to stay close to him and they waited for Karen. The girl nodded her head in response. Turning her head back, she heard some strange noises and decided to see what was going on. When she got closer, she saw an unidentified man and an unidentified girl who were having a big fight. The girl was saying that someone had just caught her eye and she wanted to say hello. She shouted, however, that there was no need to interfere with her so unceremoniously. She called the man's name, Ifrit, and cursed him. The man shouted back that she herself was already several thousand years old, and yet she was as stubborn as a sheep. He then asked her how long she would fool around with him. This was Ifrit, the lord of the fire spirits. A young girl named Persia was the ruler of the spirits of the air. The man shouted that everyone knew perfectly well that she wanted to leave a seal on the child of the Eliyahu. This made her very angry, and she asked if only the Eliyim could do this, because she also wanted to mark her slightly. Ifrit said that even if the energy of the spirits had become stronger, the woman could only become like a mouse. The girl shouted out that she remembered everything and didn't need to repeat it all the time. She told someone that there shouldn't have been any problems with it. Eva saw this argument between a man and a woman. She shouted to Undine to look at what the man was doing on the holiday when everyone was rejoicing. She pointed her finger and said that he should not have left the lady in trouble. When the woman saw the little girl, she thought she was very cute. She recognized her immediately. She would have taken her and taken her to her forever. When the man saw Eva, he did not expect the child to come there. He thought that he could not let her meet Persa so easily. Then he turned to the girl and said that there was nothing interesting for her. At that moment, the woman raised her hand up and exclaimed that the little princess had eyes herself, so she understood everything. Eva stood and watched everything that was happening. At that moment, it seemed to her that the lady who raised one hand and blew the villain away looked very much like a demoness. The woman approached the little princess and told her to call her sister. At the same time, she smiled broadly. Seeing her smile, Eva could not believe that the unknown woman could be a bad person. The girl asked her if her sister was hurt anywhere. She replied that she was fine thanks to the brave little knight. 
She thanked Eva for that. The man came closer and said that he thought he had almost died. He turned to the woman and called her a witch and asked if it was too much for him. After that, the woman turned to Ava and said that she and her husband had been friends, but had just had a little quarrel. With a furrowed brow, she said it was true. Then the sister added that he just seemed very bullying. Besides, his caftan looked like a demon, but he was actually normal. I heard that the man was very surprised. Then Eva said that she understood everything and decided to leave. She assumed that her brother Cedric was probably already searching for her. She then added that she thought her friend was not feeling well. When the girl showed up there, they immediately made it clear to the girl's lower spirit that she should keep her mouth shut. If it came out who the man and woman really were, there would be a scandal. So in India, she agreed to it and kept quiet. She survived and did not even return to the spirit world. At that moment, the witch smiled and said that she would see the girl again. After that, she suggested that the next time they met, she should call her sister. The woman rushed to the little lady and hugged her. She said that she was very sweet. The woman decided to walk the girl out and she explained that it was very dangerous to walk alone in crowded places. At this point, the man turned to the woman and asked why she was behaving like a rascal. The sister turned her head and pretended that she did not understand what he meant. Then he added that no matter what she was told, she did the opposite. After parting with her beautiful sister, she returned to Cedric and Karen in one piece. Then the boyfriend said that he had warned her not to go anywhere near him. At that moment, she was scolded for it. Little Ava apologized for what she had done, so she had to promise again that she would not go anywhere. In return, she asked that while the festival was still going on, they take her to every possible place at the festival. Thus, the girl was able to meet different people. She didn't know why, but she wanted everyone at the festival to enjoy the delicious food as much as she did. Seeing a strange old lady, the girl bowed her head and wished the woman that her year would be full of happiness. The grandmother thanked the girl from the bottom of her heart for her kindness. The grandmother replied that she had very little time left, and as a thank you to Ava, she decided to give her one piece of advice. It was like a prophecy. Putting her hands on the glowing ball, she added a comma that this prophecy had been very famous for people in the past. The woman said that when the star with the developing hair appeared, three suns would open in the sky and a large mastiff would howl loudly all night. At that moment, packs of black wolves and red monkeys will sweep across the land and snakes will overrun the eastern coast. At that time, the sky will fall to the ground and shake. Then great waves will rise from the river's Hesen and from the sea Tiber. At that moment, all the earth's dirt will burn in fire. In the end, the great master will grasp the sun with his teeth and the star that will rise from the sacred Tian Shan mountains will finally be crowned. Then the grandmother asked if Eva had been listening carefully. Eva smiled and said that she was listening carefully, but that she did not understand anything of what her grandmother was saying. The girl thanked her for that and said goodbye. Cedric thought about how the meaning of the prophecy was completely unclear to him, that even if it did not bring anything good to Eve, nothing bad had happened. Even if it was a curse, they would always be there to protect her. Ava smiled and said to Cedric that in the future she would eat the whole sun. After a little thought, the boy took his little sister's hand and said in his mind that everything would be as she wanted it to be. So, at that time, they wanted to make sure that Eve would remember that festival as one of the happiest days of her life. At that moment, they approached the crowd of people and Eva looked up and saw the parade. The little girl looked up in fascination and realized that it was time for fun. Cedric had heard before that people from all over the country came to the festival to get the coveted leaf of blessing, but he could not even imagine that there would be so many of them. At that moment, the boy was glad that he was familiar with that place. Ava shouted out that they would need a lot of leaves. Cedric realized that thanks to his mercantile younger sister, Heron would have a hard time. The boy picked her up, and Eva shouted that a hundred pieces should be enough. Karen was a loyal knight of the guard. He had to use his skills to snatch the basket of flowers. That was their plan. His special skill was to skillfully conceal himself by striking from the shadows. Cedric suggested that they should also put their efforts into this. The knight thanked him for that. Most of all, the boy wanted Eva to have an unforgettable experience during the festival and become that blessed child. 
and to the loud applause of all the insects who were there, she was able to hand out petals to everyone. However, he thought that even though his sister was a model of kindness among all those present, it was very difficult for the priest to choose her. However, when he saw the fervor with which the little girl prayed, he could not help but make that little lady his blessed child. He chose Eve from all those present and told her to come up to him as soon as possible. When Eve came up to the priest, she realized that all the leaves had to be scattered. She had only wanted to collect a lot of leaves, but it turned out that she had to work scattering the leaves. Eva shouted out that she would not do it. The girl assumed that it was all because of Cedric. She thought that he had said he would help her get a hundred leaves, and he quickly took her there and went to sit on a bench. At that moment, the priest came up to little Eva and addressed her by name. He told her that before he started scattering the petals to everyone who had gathered there, she had to take off her hood for a while and share her wishes with everyone. Eve asked if she could voice any of her wishes. The priest answered that by pressing the button on the microphone, she could say whatever she wanted, and then she would be heard. She just had to enjoy what was happening. Ava asked if, after she had scattered all the petals, she could take the whole basket with the leaves. She then added that she had come there that day to collect many petals and give them to all her close friends and family. Everyone was shocked by what they heard. At that moment, no one could say a word. The priest said that everyone agreed and he decided to give the girl the basket. But in return, since she was a blessed child, she had to do a favor and shower everyone with petals. Little Ava raised her hand and with a smile on her face, wished everyone who came to the festival that day to eat as many goodies as possible and enjoy the holiday. Cedric was worried, however, that since Eve was not very strong, the leaves would fall in a pile near her. But in the end, everything turned out very beautifully, as if the spirit of the air itself had helped her. A petal also flew into the palm of my brother's hand. Of course, this sensation was not new to him, but at that time it really felt as if Eve was blessed by the spirits themselves. Therefore, even the woman and Ifrit decided to leave. After successfully completing the parade, Eve blessed everyone with petals from the basket and returned home, where her family was waiting for her. And at that moment, the process of distributing the jewelry began. First of all, she shared them with her parents, and then with her two brothers and Heron. The girl did not forget about Undina or her other spirit friends. And even all the close family members got a piece of the jolly night. In general, no one was left out. Of course, there were still friends who hadn't been able to get the desired leaves, but she decided to make up for it next time. Ava went to her room and quickly fell asleep after an interesting evening. Meanwhile, all the knights were gathered. One of them said that the time had come, that from that day on, their humble audition was over. From that moment on, they, the knights, ceased to consider Hugo von Artin as their target. They replaced her with the defenseless Avelia von Arten and brought their operation to life. Everyone agreed with him. After the festival, little Eva had a lot of things to do. Moreover, these things were done as soon as she woke up in the morning. The girl gave all the leaves to her friends. Everyone had a very strange reaction and asked her if the wish would definitely come true. Eva answered that she had personally blessed those petals. Everyone gladly accepted her gift and was very happy. Therefore, it seemed to the girl that there would never be a more joyful event. But her family decided that in order to keep her leaves by heart, it was best to seal them in precious stones. Everyone was very happy about this decision, especially the knights. After all, they used to decorate their swords with them. The petals looked like shiny dragon skin. Because of this, there were even rumors that their knights had defeated a real dragon. However, the knights were certainly very strange people compared to the girl. She felt as if Al had suddenly gone mad. It was very scary for her. He jumped out right in front of her and asked her to save them. The other knight said that he scared their little lady. If this continued, the lady would not take their side at all and would send them farther north. Then Eva realized that the knight needed her help. That is why the little princess went to her father and told him that the knights did not want to go north. After sharing this with him, Eve realized that something had to be done to make sure that the knights were not sent anywhere. In any case, after that moment, every day was filled with happiness and joy. Meanwhile, little Eva grew up rapidly and enjoyed her life. 
It seemed to her as if the carefree childhood without repeated abuse was a thing of the past. Because Lillian really wanted to personally congratulate Eva on her birthday, she went to her and for the first time came to visit her friend herself. Lillian said that the girl had grown up a lot since they hadn't seen each other. Eva smiled and said that she had become so big a long time ago. At that moment, Cedric smiled and asked her if she had forgotten how she had run to him to sleep the previous night, because she was very scared. At that moment, Alicia thanked Mrs. Cassis for the invitation. She suggested that the children go and play. The woman added that they were very happy when Eva received the invitation from them. Mrs. Cassis said they were probably having a party at home and thanked them for coming. Meanwhile, the children had already gone home as soon as the adults started talking. Mrs. Cassis said that thanks to Eva's agreement to come and visit them, their Lillian had at least started to leave her room for a little bit. Alicia was shocked to hear this. She realized that their daughter could not accept something. Embarrassed, the woman said that it was not Liliana's fault. But since the arrival of a child, the girl's condition had only gotten worse. Even protecting her as the apple of her eye, the woman could not keep her from becoming withered, and her body not her soul. Liliana's mother suggested that she was like her in this. Afterwards, she said that it would be very wonderful if their Lillian was at least sometimes as cheerful and cheerful as their Eva. The woman really wanted her to be able to express her emotions again someday, just like the other children did. She wished this with all her heart, but she was very afraid that it could only remain her pipe dream. Meanwhile, Eva was fascinated by the incredible beauty of the castle in Lillian. The girl really liked the garden. Lillian was very happy that Eva liked it. Afterwards, the girl offered to visit her room and try some croissants. Hearing this, Eva said that she decided to stay and play some more. Holding out her hand, she said that there was a wonderful wind that day, and the weather was just wonderful. Afterwards, the girl added that even if she got her dress too wet, it was no big deal. Full of energy and strength, she began to play and dance. Lillian did not like this idea at all, and did not understand where Eva was going. She shouted out to the girl that there was a pit farther away and it was full of mud. Eva did not want to listen to her friend at all. She jumped right into the puddle and said that she would make a mess. Then she held out her hand to her friend and invited her to join her. Then, after thinking for a few minutes, Lillian realized that her dress would be dirty anyway after the walk in the garden, and she kept working herself up over and over again about such nonsense. The moment she decided to join the girl, and said that they would jump together. After that, she added that they would make a mess together. At that moment, the little girl Lily Ann had a feeling of coma that day, had finally come after night. It was as bright as Eve herself. Then, the little girl realized that through her friendship with Eve, she could ever be happy. The girl who came to the Marquis's estate from time to time was named Nefira. She was the same age as Liliana. The girl came to Marcus Cassis as an illegitimate daughter. Nefira's mother was the heiress of the great merchant of the dot, but she died immediately after giving birth. They could not even say a word. They could only hope that someday they would be able to return to normal life. However, Lillian had a very hard time with this. The girl came up to Lillian and introduced herself as her older sister. From the moment Fira realized what kind of person Lillian was, she slowly began to cross all boundaries. It was very difficult for Lillian, who was already very sensitive about everything connected with her father, to see the non-gray proudly walking around the estate as if she were the Marquis's rightful daughter. Because of her short-sightedness, Lillian could not put Nefir in her place as she would have done in any other noble family. Therefore, she gradually began to wither in body and soul. When her brother found out about this, he was ready to do anything to ensure that his sister would never suffer again. She just wanted to live like any other normal child. When Alicia and Mrs. Cassis came to the garden, they saw that the girls were completely dirty. At that moment, Liliana stood in front of Ava and said that she had not intended to make the girl dirty. Then she added that on the contrary, it was because of their daughter that they had a great time. Then Lillian added that Alicia should not scold Eva because she had opened her eyes to the fun that was hidden in their garden. At that moment, a spark of hope was lit in Mrs. Cassie's heart. She wanted the smile to never disappear from her daughter's face again. For that, she needed Eva to be always there. In order for Eva to visit them often,
the woman had to come up with something that she would definitely like. Luckily, thanks to Lillian, her mother didn't drop dead at the sight of that comma. What a mess they made there. The inspection asked why there was mud all over Lillian, they were allowed to play with her once together. Alone, before that, Lillian had to take her medicine, so Ava had to wait for her friend for a while. Meanwhile, she had already changed her clothes. While waiting for her, Eva was very bored and almost fell asleep. At that moment, Lily's brother brought Eva a book and asked her if she wanted to read a story while she waited for Lillian. The story was called The Adventures of a Chicken. The girl could not understand where the boy came from so suddenly. Afterwards, the boy added that it was a special fairy tale, and he had written it himself. He assured her that the girl would not be sad with such a story. Taking the book in her hands, Ava realized that it was the first time she had seen a living fairy tale. She became very curious. A long time ago, a young chicken wanted to sleep sweetly and went on an exciting journey in search of a safe nest. This was the beginning of the book. The boy told Ava to read the story and not to be shy. After all, he also came to visit Lillian. He had several such books, so he wanted the girl to come back next time. Ava nodded her head and agreed with the boy. Then she read that as soon as the chicken set off on its journey, a white heron appeared out of nowhere and swallowed it. That was the end of the story. Eva was disappointed because it was the first time she had ever seen such a story in her six years, although it wasn't too bad. She decided that she would like to see his other stories. At that moment, a girl entered the room. She turned to Eva and said that she thought she was reading and she did not interrupt her. The girl immediately recognized Mrs. Artina. She was the eldest daughter of the Marquis Cassis. She said her name was Nefira. The girl apologized for coming up to Eva so suddenly, but she really wanted to meet her. Eva was shocked that Lillian had an older sister. She could not understand why her friend had never told her that she had a sister. At that moment, Lillian entered the room. She thanked Eva for waiting for her friend. The girl wanted to treat her friend to cookies, but she saw her older sister there and was very upset. Nefira said that her younger sister hadn't come out of her room lately and that she had just thought of hiding her cute face from everyone. After that, Nefira turned to Ava and expressed her hope that the girl would not mind if she also played with her. She then added that she also wanted to talk to her. Ava agreed. She said that while she was waiting for Lillian, she was reading a story and it was over. The girl wanted to go and find other fairy tales. Nefira said she would help her with that. Then she said that Lily would wait for them there. Then the older sister turned to the younger sister and told her to look at the beautiful necklace her father had given her for her birthday that year. The girl asked if it was really that beautiful. Then she asked Lillian what she had gotten for her birthday that year. Lillian replied that she had been given a book of coma spells that year, which she did not understand at all. Then Fira said that her father had asked her to accompany Lily when she went out for the first time. She added that they were yearlings, so she suggested that they wear the same dress that day. She thought that this way they would look like twins. Necra thought it would be very beautiful and asked Lily's opinion. Lillian did not like the idea at all. She realized that Fira was not afraid of her at all, as if she were nothing. She kept calling her younger, even though no one had ever allowed her to do so. Besides, she was constantly bragging about her father's gifts to her. It was all very unbearable. Compared to Lily, who was dull and inexpressive, Fira was bright and shiny. She had no trouble winning everyone's attention. The girl noticed that even Ava was happy to share a book with her. At that moment, Lily turned around and told them to do as they pleased and that she did not care at all. At this point, Nefira asked Lily if her father had told her anything yet. She then added that the girl had not been feeling well, and they had talked about how she might not make it to her debut. Afterwards, the older sister added that it seemed to her that the Marquis was heartbroken with this particular salt and invited her there, in order to make his illegitimate daughter legitimate after Lily's death. For official confirmation, she needed the consent of His Imperial Majesty and the current head of the Duke's family. She caught her sister's hand and said that there was nothing complicated about it. Afterwards, she seemed to apologize to Lilia Zait for telling her so directly. But since they had the same father, it was necessary to clearly explain who was illegitimate and who was legitimate. It was not Fira who said that she thought it sounded very gloomy coming from her. Then she smiled and said that her mother was far from being a landowner, for she was only the heiress of a merchant. Nevertheless, 
she believed that she would be the first legitimate daughter in their family. The girl then added that as much as Lillian could not be sure whether she would wake up the next day, it was not Fira who intended to take her place and become the best daughter. Then she added that the girl should not worry because even Ava would be happy to play with her. Addressing her sister by name, she said that she understood everything. After all, she was constantly worried that at least someone would pay at least a little attention to her, while she was surrounded by love from all sides. The girl added that she was more suited to the role of the Marquis's own daughter. At this point, Ava could not stand it and intervened in their conversation. She shouted loudly to Nefira and asked what intrigue she was up to. The girl said that she had gone completely crazy because she wanted to be officially recognized as her daughter. Ava said that she did not agree with this at all. Fira did not realize that in order to take her place in high society, she needed to build a friendship with Eva. But in that moment of comma, she realized that she had made a mistake. Smiling, she turned to Eve and said that there was a small misunderstanding between them. She said that no one had asked Eva's opinion in this matter and that it was up to His Grace the Duke. Everything depended only on His Imperial Majesty and the Duke. She believed that even without Eva's help, she would be able to figure it out on her own. But Eva shouted out that her father had always said that she was the one who blessed the path of the Arten family. She then added that if she didn't believe it, she could have gone and checked for herself. But the little princess did not allow her friend Lillian to insult her. At this point, she caught Lillian's hand and asked her if she liked that Eva took her side. She shouted that no one could ever love a girl who did nothing but take care of her suffering. She was very angry and said that after Lillian's death, no one but Eve would miss her. At that moment, Eve pounced on Nefira and caught her by the hair. The little princess shouted that they would see who would die and she could already prepare her funeral speech. Eve began to beat Nefira and shouted at her to leave her best friend alone. Then she added that Lillian Cassis was the brightest and coolest person in the world. Ava continued to pull Nefira's hair and said that if the girl said anything else bad about her friend, she would not hold a single hair on her head. On the same day, a small scandal occurred in the Marquise's house. Fortunately, it was quickly hushed up thanks to the Duchess's appearance. Alone, having put the airwaves in their place and returned home, Ava nevertheless did not have a very smooth rest of the day. When she met up with her friends, she explained that there was a girl in the house who had been very bad to Lily, and she decided to pull out her hair and then called Silpha and gave her a good lesson. She added that her mom said that violence is very bad. She scolded the little lady. The demon noticed that her mother was also right and she could not be changed at all. So he said that next time he should do a better job of keeping such matters secret from her. Then the boy said that instead of coming to them, Eva had gone to the Marquis's house to play with his daughter. The little lady smiled and said that she went there mostly for Lillian, but not only. She was also attracted to the comic books that her brother Ikrian had made especially for her. When the boys heard this, they were shocked. After all, he was luring the girl to him with fairy tales. The prince asked why Eva called him brother. She replied that he was Lily's brother. The prince added that he had just heard her call the Marquis's eldest son brother, Ikrian. Demolition agreed with the prince and asked why the girl had called that boy brother. Eva shouted out that he was just Lily's brother. She thought the boy was very smart and good-natured. He was the youngest wizard in the school, a rising star. He would never have thought of stealing goodies out of the blue. Eva was sure that in a few years, he would be as good as his father. The boys listened to the little lady's story in amazement. Turning to the prince, she said that he had stolen all her chocolates. The demon smiled and said that at least sometimes he was called an ace besides the rabbit, but the prince would always be a thief of sweets. He began to laugh and said that even the servant was treated more kindly. The boy said that he would rather be associated with a cute animal. Eva shouted that she was just joking. At that moment, the boy said that he had to go. The little girl said they would definitely see it later. As he was leaving the room, the boy turned and said that he didn't even know why she hadn't asked him about it until then. He then added that from now on, the girl could call him Louis. Following him, Eva shouted out that how could a coma robber like him think of being so careless with his name? The girl noticed that even the rabbit heard him. She added that that was why she didn't ask him, even though she was very curious about his name. Hearing this, the boy laughed. 
He could not think that the girl still believed all the nonsense she was told. At that moment, he left the house. I would turn to the demon and tell him not to tell anyone about Louis, because she didn't want anyone to catch him. He smiled and said that there were many insects who would want to catch the crown prince of the empire. After that, the rabbit asked if the girl could summon Sylph. Handing over the book, the demon told her to read my story several times. Eva agreed. At that moment, he decided to test something. Eva began to read the book the demon was offering her. At that moment, something strange began to happen around them. The boy saw that the spirits below appeared the moment she called them. The little princess did not realize that she had done it. The demon smiled and said that she was definitely not talented in swordsmanship, but she was surely good at magic. He realized, and it was obvious, that someone was helping her. Then he told her to read it again. The girl realized that an ordinary person could not even dream of such a thing, and the demon was very persistent. She immediately began to read everything that was written there. It was the power of spirits. Ava could not believe her eyes. She called not only the middle water spirit Undina, but also the middle air spirit Silaf. The heroine was very happy that she had succeeded and realized that she had a natural talent. At such a young age, that girl already had such a powerful energy of spirits. The demon cursed that lord of spirits because no matter what problem arose, he did not fix it. The spirit and the air and the water meant something interesting. Then he decided that he needed to meet with the Lord once in order to never do it again. Eva was excited about the next day. Lately, the overly lazy fairy tale writer had finally taken up publishing again. Just looking at Lewis's homework made his eyes bleed. Meanwhile, Eva went to see Lillian. Cedric warned the girl not to stay up late because they were supposed to have dinner with their parents that night. He warned her, however, that she could go without food for the rest of her life and would therefore be very small. Afterwards, one of the brothers said that he had to cook a set that day, so they warned her not to be late. The girl realized that it had been a long time since they had gathered as a family for one thing. She decided that she would quickly read the fairy tales and come right away. It seemed to the little lady that that day would actually be very fun. Waving her hand, she said the couple would be back. When she arrived, the girl immediately started reading the fairy tales. After reading a few pages, she realized that there wasn't even a quarter of what was there before. She didn't understand why the tale ended so abruptly. Eva thought that the writer was not finished and had become lazy. Lillian smiled and said that if Eva was going to hit her brother, she should take a book to do it with so it would be more comfortable. Eva jumped up and said that she was going to quarrel with the writer immediately. At that moment, she turned her head to her friend and asked if she was okay because she hadn't seen her in a few days. Eve noticed that it was because she hadn't even looked at the book and was constantly fidgeting with her hands nervously, and so it understood. The little lady promised to sort it out and to tell her everything. Lily then asked her friend if she remembered the girl, Nefira. Eva immediately remembered who she was talking about. Lily noticed that it was her father's birthday next month, and every time he was delighted with her gift. That was what made Lily feel uncomfortable. This time, she decided to prepare a gift that would surpass anything that Nephi could give. So the girl thought about what to give her father. Eve smiled and suggested that they go together to buy him a gift, and she would help her choose the best one. Then she added that in order to choose a good gift, they had to go to the city and see what was available. She told them to do that that day, but to keep it a secret from her father. At that moment, one of the knights came into the room. He did not understand what Eva was up to, but he immediately realized that she needed the city. Eva was surprised to hear Karen say that he had come in very suddenly and had frightened Lillian. The boy apologized to the girls for his sudden appearance, but it seemed to him that the little lady was the most frightened. Heron added that since he was obliged to guard the little princess, he had to stop her little journey, or rather her escape. The knight bowed his head and said that he hoped she would understand. Eve said that Karen was very strict. Then, the knight asked if Ava would mind being accompanied by a group of knights during her absence. The girl immediately shouted out that this was impossible because they wanted to keep everything a secret and they would cause gossip in the city. Besides, they had to get everything done before dinner so they had little time. Lilianu smiled and told Harrow not to worry because the shopping street was almost around the corner. And besides, the Imperial Palace was nearby and it would hardly be safer than there. 
After thinking for a few minutes, Karen replied that since it was such an important matter, they would just look at the gift and come right back. He went with the girls to the city. The boy walked behind the girls and realized that it was the first time he had ever seen a lady just get out into the city like that. That is why he was very happy in his heart. But Karen could not understand why it was so dark in that alley. Suddenly, the girl stopped, and Eve turned to her friend. Karen said that the demon he had met in the war had suddenly appeared in that narrow alley. He shouted that the little lady should immediately take Lillian and return to the estate. Seeing everything, Eva immediately apologized to the boy. Meanwhile, the battle began. The demon was shouting to run with his tail between his legs, it was very Ardenovian. But he said he would not let the girls leave. At that moment, Eva decided to call Silaf and Undina. She instructed Undine to take Liliana to a safe place, and Silaf was to help them deal with the demon. He smiled and realized that the girl had decided to summon spirits among them. Then he realized why he was ordered to kill her. Karen shouted that the little princess should run away immediately. Then he added that he would not be able to hold the enemy for long. He asked her to go away quickly. At that moment, Eve turned to Karen and said that it was impossible for Artina to leave her knights behind. She shouted for the boy to cover her, and she would cover him. She also said that if they had to fight someone like a rabbit with milk, that she and Karen would somehow manage. The demon started laughing out loud and said that it didn't matter if there was one or two of them. He added that they had no chance of being saved. He believed that some knight and a snotty sorceress would not be enough to deal with him. It would require a lord of spirits. Suddenly, blood began to pour out of Eve's mouth. At that moment, the girl realized the consequences of the exorcism. She began to cough and fell to her knee. The demon laughed even more and harder. He said that it was a great pleasure for him to catch the escaping beast, and fortunately, it was very easy. He apologized for causing a lot of trouble, and in return, he guaranteed that the snotty knight would die faster. At that moment, one of the knights ran to his majesty at the palace and told him that there was an emergency in the capital. He said that on that day, a demon had appeared on the shopping street in the alley leading to the Marquis's estate. He said that it attacked the daughters of the Marquis and the Duke. The boy was carrying Karen on his shoulders. The Duke immediately rushed to him. Karen was very seriously wounded. The Duke immediately asked him about his daughter and whether they were safe. The boy said that only thanks to Eva's help he managed to get out of the demon's den unharmed, but that Eva seemed to have been kidnapped. The Duke immediately asked what the demon looked like. The boy replied that he had not been seen in the war between demons and humans. If they wanted to find out anything about him, they had to go to the fugitives. Any delay could cost the little lady her life. At that moment, the Emperor exclaimed that the state meeting was over. He did not say to send all the knights to the palace to search for the Hertog's daughter, but they themselves were to search for the fugitives. Everyone who was there had to make every effort to find Ava. Meanwhile, Eve could not have known that the consequences of exorcism were so severe. She didn't even have the strength to run away from that unknown demon. When she opened her eyes, she did not even know where to run. The girl realized that she should not lose consciousness under any circumstances. At that moment, the demon approached her, holding a sword in his hand. He addressed her and told her that she had finally come to her senses. He then asked her if she had any idea how many nerves he had lost, wondering if she was alive or not. The demon said that he had brought her there to kill her personally. He would have been very offended if she had done it without him. At that moment, Eve barely looked at him. He came closer and told her not to waste herself on nonsense because it was time for her to die anyway. He looked at her and told her not to strain. The man added that by killing her, he would finally be able to pay off the contract. That was his plan for that day, so he wanted to hurry. Then she added that he would not escape death from his parents and brothers, and even his friends. So she told him not to exclude himself from doing anything stupid either. He smiled and said that he had done well to bring her to a place where he could enjoy the pain and suffering that would glare from her blue eyes before he took them out. He could not wait to see every broken bone of life leave her eyes. Raising the sword, he said that they must begin. Then he added that the beginning would be with them. Eve was thinking that Seth was going to cook for a three-story house that day, and she wouldn't even be able to see him in the end. Suddenly, something strange began to happen. A.C. appeared there. 
He immediately took the little princess in his arms and apologized to her, saying that he was a little late. Little Eva immediately burst into tears and hugged the boy and said that she was very hurt and scared. She thanked him for coming to pick her up. He apologized and said it would never happen again. Stroking the girl's head, the boy told her to fall asleep sweetly. In the meantime, he would deal with that bastard Zate for what he had done. He decided to make him feel very sorry for what he had done, but there was no need to apologize. Besides, he wanted to take revenge for all the humiliation that the bastard had put him through. The demon asked if this was how demons greeted each other when they first met. He didn't understand how the guy had gotten there at all, because he had put a lot of effort into getting Eva there, and the guy had appeared out of nowhere and didn't let him finish the job. Ace smiled and said that the girl was very lucky to have a friend. Just so the demon knew, his specialty was to find whatever Eve wanted. However, even with such abilities, he would have known nothing about the girl's disappearance if Lewis had not told him about it. The demon was saying that such a worthless bastard had somehow managed to cut off his hand. He said that those rumors had been around for many years, and he thought that the whole topic with the ruler was long in the past. He then added that while he was running to his east and waiting out the storm there, they were fighting a really bloody war in the center. And now, he believed, they were stronger than ever. The demon said that the boy was facing the 16th Zippar of all the 72 demons of the Le Megaton, and at that moment, the boy would personally see the difference between them. But suddenly, at that moment, with a single movement of his hand, AC was able to restrain the demon's hands. He did not understand where he got so much demonic energy. He thought it was impossible. As Ace held the little princess in his arms, he realized that a strong wind was starting to blow. The demon could not understand how he held it back. Even though he was a superior demon, he could not believe that he could control the elements outside of hell. Then, the demon said that he should be pitied and not tell anyone. If he was pitied, he would be devoted to the boy for the rest of his life. 